Shvili to start the business session. Mr. Chair, please. Good morning, Governors, President Asakawa. The meeting is called to order. I would like to welcome all of you to the business session of the 57th Annual Meeting of the Board of Governors of the Asian Development Bank. Let us first take up paragraph two and three of the Procedures Committee report. With regards to the provisional schedule of the business session, document PG572, you will know that the schedule provides that we finish all the items on the agenda today. The provisions related to the conduct of the meeting as set out in the document PG573 are similar to those adopted in previous years. I take it that these two documents are acceptable and that we may provide approve them as recommended by the Procedures Committee. In paragraph one of its report, the Procedures Committee has recommended the approval of agenda as shown in document PG 571. If there is no objection, I declare that the agenda is approved. Let us now take up the uh, committee's recommendation on the agenda item and start with the agenda item one, two, three, four, and nine for our notion, which we approved by the board of directors. Item number one is item one is the. ADB annual report for 2023, and item two is the update to the rules of regulations as contained in document PG 574. Item three is the budget for 2024, which encompasses the budget for ADB and the ADB Institute, as shown in document five, PG 575. Item four is the status of financial resources as contained in the document PG 576. And item nine is the report to the Board of Governor on gender diversity at the ADB Board of Directors as contained in the document BG 579. As recommended by the Procedures Committee, I propose that the board takes note of these five items accordingly. Turning to item five, financial statements, management report on internal control over financial reporting and independent auditors report, and item six, allocation of net income the committee recommends approval of document PG 577 and PG 578, respectively. In the absence of any objections, I declare these two items approved and the draft resolution as submitted by the Procedures Committee are adopted. Turning to agenda item seven, the committee recommends that the Procedures Committee for 2024-2025 be composed of the governors for Armenia, Australia, People's Republic of China, Italy, Japan, Lao People's Democratic Republic, Norway, Pakistan, Thailand, Turkey, the United States, and Vanuatu, with the governor for Italy as chair of the committee. If there is no objection, I declare this recommendation approved. <laughs> I 
I congratulate the newly appointed members of the Procedures Committee. Moving on the agenda item 8, the committee has recommended that the Governors for Italy be elected Chair of the Board of Governors for 2024-2025, and that the Governors for Maldives and the Federal States of Micronesia be elected Vice Chairs to hold office from the end of this annual meeting to the end of the 58th annual meeting of, of the Board of Governors. If there is no objection, I declare this recommendation approved. Uh, I have great pleasure in congratulating the Governor for Italy on their election as Chair of the Board of Governors for 2024-2025. I also congratulate the Governors for Maldives and the Federal, uh, Federated States of Micronesia of their election as Vice Chairs for 2024-2025. At this point, allow me to say a few words of, as Chair of the Board of Governors. Esteemed President Asakawa, Honorable Governors, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, let me once again welcome you all in Georgia I am very honored to be the chair of the 57th annual meeting and this business session. The motto of this year, annual meeting, Bridge to the Future, was chosen for a couple of reasons, including the Georgia's role as a geopolitic and geopolitic geopolitical geographical location in the connectivity between Europe and Asia, as well as the momentum globally of the still recovering from the pandemic, dealing with the global crisis related to the Russia's war in Ukraine and other conflicts, and passing our ways through the mitigate and the adapt to climate change related risks and other cross-cutting challenges. While Georgia is gradually progressing on its path to achieve the strategic goals, receiving EU candidate status, finalizing big bones uh, infrastructure and enhancing the middle corridor connectivity and building strong human capital, there is so much more to be done. While more economies are recovering worldwide, including Georgia, which showed the exceptional resilience, still the uncertainty are still huge. In 2021 and 2022 period, along with the negative impacts of the post-pandemic uh, period in Russia's Ukraine war, as well as very robust fiscal consolidation, economy managed to grow in double digit two years in a row and come back to pre-pandemic trend. Higher than average growth continues in 2023 and 2024 with the preliminary growth of 7.5% in 2023 and 7.8% in the first quarter of 2024. Our policy priorities in this challenging environment continues to be maintaining macroeconomic stability and to prepare for the, any reversal of temporary positive factors, mitigate ne negative impacts and ensure long-term sustainability of the structural reforms. Georgia continues successful cooperation with the bank through its diversified pro portfolio, approximately 4.5 billion, for public and private sector. We trust and believe in the future cooperations with ADB in the priorities areas for Georgia, energy security and independence through increased the green and renewable generation and enhanced connectivity in transmissions including upcoming Black Sea under sea cable project, road and digital connectivity infrastructure, reforming corporate governance and investing in human capital are among the high priority areas of our agenda. 
to bridge to the bright future. We all require strong regional synergy and support to the development partners. Uh, the MDB's support is crucial with the diversified and innovative instruments that respond to existing constraints. The extreme nature of current challenges needs swift reply and out-of-box solutions. We would encourage the bank and the countries of operation to work together on the solutions that allow more appetite to borrow in the fiscally sustainable manner for achieving sustainable development goals and climate agenda requirements. Again, we are extremely glad for the opportunity to host all of you in Tbilisi, and I'm looking forward for fruitful discussion today. Thank you. Uh, we will now proceed with the management's report to the Board of Governors. I would like to call on the President of the Asian Development Bank to deliver the remarks. President Asakawa, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, members of the Board of Governors, uh, good morning. Uh, welcome uh, to the business session of ADB's annual meeting uh, in TBDC. I thank the Chair of Board of Governors, His Excellency Rasha Kutusibili, and the Government of Georgia uh, for hosting uh, our meeting uh, this year. Uh, let me start by saying that the outlook for Asia and the Pacific remains solid. However, over the past years, uh, our developing member countries have con confronted the growing challenges of climate change, conflict, food insecurity, and increased debt. The climate crisis in particular uh, threatens the region's development. Uh, 2023 was the warmest year on record. Last year also saw disasters, many from natural hazard, affect about 44 million people uh, in Asia and the Pacific. At the last annual meeting, I said that the ADB is actively evolving its mission to better support our developing member countries as they deal with these challenges. ADB's major capital management reforms are from, the, from the past year unlocked up to 100 billion US dollars in new lending capacity for the next decade. Similarly, <coughs> our new operating model, our NOM, has enabled us to deliver better, faster, and more tailored support to our developing member countries. More broadly, our performance last year demonstrated strong progress in areas uh, that are key to achieving our priorities. So let me summarize. ADB committed 23.6 billion US dollars in loans, grants, guarantees, equity, equi equity investments, and technical assistance in 2023, last year, a 15% increase from the previous year. Uh, this included a record 9.8 billion US dollars in climate finance uh, from ADB's own resources, representing 41.5% of our total commitment. ADB's private sector operations department committed 3.8 billion US dollars for non sovereign operations, with a significant increase in lending for frontier economies. ADB met uh, its corporate financing target for health, gender, and education. And uh, we are on track to meet our ambition for food security financing. Asian Development Fund, ADF, commitment reached 721 million US dollars in 2023. And we project this to increase to 865 million dollars in this year. ADB also introduced favorable concessional lending terms to small island developing members. ADB launched the Innovative Finance Facility for Climate in Asia and the Pacific, IFCAP, in short, a landmark guarantee mechanism to scale up the region's climate investment. At the 28th Conference of Parties, COP28 in Dubai, how we unveiled our climate change action plan for 2023 to 2030. 
This will guide support to our DMCs in achieving uh, their nationally determined contributions and mobilize finance to help countries transition to low carbon and climate resilient economies. We also have important efforts on the horizon. This year, ADB will use Strategy 2030 mid-term review and the Corporate Results Framework for 2025 to 2030 to learn and continue to evolve our support to clients. ADB will effectively and efficiently use its newly expanded lending capacity to support key priorities, along with our new members most in need. ADB's new operating model, NOM, will continue to emphasize climate action and private sector development. To advance our shifts under the new operating model and ensure accountability, we will also introduce new ways of working. These include new digital tools, regional work programs, and corporate performance indicators. We will finalize the 14th replenishment of the Asian Development Fund, ADF. This will allow us to support the region's poorest and most vulnerable countries until 2028. I am so grateful for the generous pledges that donors made here in Tbilisi toward this replenishment. Thank you very much for that. With our focus on these key directions, I am confident that the ADB will remain equipped to support the people of the region in the rapidly changing global and regional landscape. Let me close by saying how proud I am of our ability to evolve and work together to meet new challenges. Governors, I very much appreciate your ongoing support and guidance. ADB looks forward to our continued collaboration to achieve a prosperous, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable Asia and the Pacific. Thank you. Thank you, President Asakawa. We will now proceed with the discussion. To start the discussion, let me call on the Secretary to explain the conduct of this part, of this meeting, Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chair. To have an orderly and constructive discussion and to give sufficient time for governors uh, to speak, an order of speaking has been established. In this regard, I would like to remind the governors that the provisions relating to the conduct of uh, the meeting which have just been approved, call on governors to keep their spoken remarks brief within the allotted time of three minutes. For joint remarks, five minutes will be allotted. Please be assured that your full written remarks will be included in the summary of proceedings of the meeting. To help governors pace themselves, a system of signaling lights has been installed on the screens. We would request the governors conclude the remarks as soon as possible when the light turns red. Headphones are provided for simultaneous interpretation and channels for various languages are flashed on the screen. With the chair's permission, we propose to take three five minute breaks during the session. Thank you. Over to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Distinguished governors, Mr. President, let me call on the governor for Japan. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, please use your headset as I will speak in Japanese. Sōmukai Gichō, Sōsai, Kakoku Sōmu, Narabi ni Goreseki no minasama. まず保障を使った革新的な資金動員イニシアティブである 
、イフキャップに対し、すでに表明したグラント枠への2500万ドルの貢献に加え、先般成立した予算に基づき、保証枠を通じた6億ドルの信用保管を供与し、約30億ドルの資金余力の拡大に貢献いたします。また、開発効果をさらに高めるためには、国内財源の活用、債務持続性の確保、質の高いインフラの構築なども不可欠であり、<咳> ADB の一層、積極的な役割を期待いたします。さらにこの総会に先駆けて、ADF14 の増資交渉が終了し、約50億ドルの状況的資金が確保されたことを歓迎いたします。日本は ADF の最大ドナーとして、当初国を含む脆弱国の持続可能な開発を支援すべく、約1620億円の拠出を表明いたします。最後に、ADB が引き続き、地域の繁栄に向けて大きな役割を果たすことを期待し、2027年の第60回 ADB 総会を日本に誘致したいと考えております。各国総務をはじめ、関係者の皆様のご支持を賜りたく存じます。日本は、浅川総裁のリーダーシップの下、今後も ADB がその経験と強みを生かし、MDBs が直面する世界共通の課題の解決に向けて、主導的に取り組んでいくことを期待をいたします。ありがとうございました。I thank the governor for Japan. Now I call on the governor for United States. Thank you, Chair. It is a great pleasure to be in Tbilisi, and I thank our Georgian hosts for their generous hospitality, amazing cultural events, and delicious walnut infused delic delicacies. We meet after a year of relatively strong and resilient growth. Still, the recovery is uneven, and many countries remain vulnerable to shocks, including to the existential issue of climate change. Many countries are seeking to manage risks amid tight global conditions and high debt levels. The midterm review of Strategy 2030 is an opportune moment to reflect on ADB's successes and needed refinements against this backdrop. President Asakawa, Masa, thank you and your team for your tireless work to make ADB a reliable and effective partner for the countries of this region. And I would like to extend a special note of appreciation to Wo Chung u m It's his last annual meeting. The successful replenishment of ADF 14 is a powerful example that a robust financial package follows a strong policy package. The robust $5 billion replenishment will help the region's poorest and most fragile countries, particularly climate vulnerable Pacific Island countries and the people of Afghanistan and Myanmar. Since Secretary Zielin's call for MDB evolution, ADB has been at the forefront of delivering progress on many fronts. Yet, the work is far from finished. ADB has made significant strides in responsibly stretching its balance sheet, unlocking about $100 billion in additional lending capacity. We are optimistic that even more could be added by appropriately recognizing the value of callable capital. Now the focus must turn to a strategic capital utilization plan guided by how the greatest impact can be achieved. ADB's NOM is a powerful piece of ADB's climate and private sector shifts. Now the focus must turn to implementing deeper, more transformational reforms, such as on business processes, incentives for staff and countries, decentralization, and sovereign and non sovereign cooperation. We welcome the ADB's commitment to becoming the region's climate bank and the new climate action plan. Now the focus must turn to measuring not just funds dispersed, but climate outcomes achieved. The bank must also consider adopting a percentage based climate target in line with other MDBs. Yesterday, we had a positive session on private sector development. Now we must turn to establishing a clear private capital mobilization target, sharing data, setting incentives, evolving the set of de risking and risk sharing instruments, and stepping up work to support the policy reforms and macro fun fundamentals that are foundational to attracting investor interest. Turning to important institutional priorities, we believe the review of the ADB's safeguard policy statement has the potential to modernize its approach to environmental and social safeguards. An effective policy should provide adequate time for public disclosure, improve supply chain due diligence, and be accompanied by capacity building and support for robust implementation. Similarly, 
procurement reforms are promising, and we have begun to shift the focus from lowest cost to quality and value for money principles. We urge ADB to redouble efforts to strengthen implementation, including supporting capacity building for DMCs and developing a differentiated approach for fragile countries and Pacific Island countries. Finally, we applaud ADB's commitment to gender diversity on the board of directors and in operations and remain committed to broadening inclusivity in all of its aspects. As I reflect on the value of the productive and frank exchanges enabled by these annual meetings and the connections made and remade and reinforced, I am reminded, and I believe that we should all recall, the importance of having open and safe spaces for dialogue, including for civil society and the press. Thank you. I thank the governor for the United States. I now call on the governor for the People's Republic of China. So, so Minister Kostruini and President Massa, so dear governors and colleagues, so I myself actually a newcomer for uh, this ADB family. So it's a great pleasure to see uh, old friends and new friends here. So first of all, I would like to thank Governor of George for hosting this annual meeting and thank you for your warm hosp hospitality and the cultural events and particularly a warm toast over the dinner last night. So ADB has made a great achievements under the leadership of President Massa over the past year. So including major reforms such as capital management reform and adoption of a new operation model. We highly appreciate this hard-won achievements. We are confident that President Massa and his team will deliver more in the coming years. So President Massa just mentioned in his speech that the region was facing growing challenges, so which I fully agree. For most developing countries, there is a paradigm shift in the sustainable development strategies today. So a traditionally sustainable development requires steady investment in education and skills, improvements in the quality of institutions. It requires more balanced growth between investment and consumption between the services industry and the manufacturing industries. Uh, it's right, but not enough. Climate and the digital transition has brought unprecedented challenges. We need a fundamental economic structure change. So those challenges can be turned into opportunities if we handle it properly. So against this background, developing members are in present need of support from AM, MDBS, including ADB and others. So ADB could play a role more than a bank. ADB could be a solution provider and a partner in this journey for the developing countries. That's what we have done together with ADB in China. So both sides have maintained a strong partnership over the 40 years. So China has not only received financial assistance, but also benefit from knowledge, experiences, and innovative ideas delivered by ADB, so which is helpful for us to find a practical solution to achieve sustainable development. There are many cases in this regard. So ADB financed the Sanxi Qingling Biodiversity Project, visited by President Massa recently. It's a good example to show us we could protect biodiversity address climate change, create employment, and improve the public institutions at the same time if we do it properly and wisely. So dear colleagues, so China really appreciate the valuable support from ADB and international communities. We are also uh, trying to uh, make more contribution to region's development. So in light of the significant role ADB played to support the poorest and the most vulnerable people in Asia and the Pacific. China pledged 183 million US dollars to AD, ADF 14, so demonstrated a significant increased contribution to the poverty reduction in Davos in this region. So look forward, we look forward to a more fruitful, closer cooperation and a partnership with ADB to build the bridge to the future. Thank you. I thank the governor for the People's Republic of China. I call on the governor, on the governor for India. 
Thank you, Chair. Um, Chair of the Board of the Governors, uh, distinguished members of the ADB's Board of Governors, uh, President of the ADB, ADB Board of Directors, Heads of Delegations, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, I join my colleagues in thanking the government and the Governor of Georgia for hosting us and for their warm hospitality. Uh, this year's theme of ADB's annual meeting, Bridge to the Future, resonating with the G20 theme of building a just world and a sustainable planet aptly brings out our focus on measures to build a better future through planet and people-friendly approaches. As the nations in Asia and the Pacific grapple with the complexities of global economic landscape manifested in lo slow post-pandemic economic recovery, near stagnant global economic growth, increasing inequalities, and the challenges posed by the climate change, India has converted the challenges into opportunities and opportunities into concrete action. It is the result of proactive policies and actions of the, over the last one decade that India has not only recovered quickly from the impact of the pandemic, but has also emerged as one of the fastest growing economies in the world, despite challenges. In our line with our commitment to support the smaller economies in the region, we have increased our contribution to the ADF 14 to US dollars 58.17 million. We are confident that the larger pool of much needed resources resulting from a successful replenishment of ADF shall be deployed effectively and lend much needed support to the smaller economies in the region, especially for tackling the challenges posed by the climate change. ADB, we believe, has a critical role in facilitating measures of foster, foster economic development, reducing poverty, and promoting regional cooperation, while effectively addressing the challenges in delivery of global public goods. However, to play a cent center stage role, especially in addressing the ambitious climate agenda, ADB is expected to grow bigger, better, and bolder, in line with the New Delhi Declaration of the G20. Based on the detailed recommendations made by the independent expert group, appointed under the Voices of India's G20 Presidency. We are happy to note that ADP is proactively implementing the impl recommendations of IEG to live up to the aspirations of being the trusted development partner of the fast-growing economies of Asia and of transforming itself into a climate bank. ADP shall have to not only continue to pursue these reform measures, but would also have to assist members in catalyzing significant private sector investments especially for climate finance, in addition to concessional financing, coupled with technology transfer in line with the global challenges funding mechanism recommended by the G20. A bigger and bolder ADB can produce better results if it transforms its business processes, such as moving away from isolated and smaller individual projects, uh, project-based funding, towards multi-year multi transformative, strategic, and programmatic funding approaches. We hope that the ADB's new operating model will result in better operational efficiencies and significant reduction in processing time in lending operations. We note with concern that economic growth and dealing with the remaining poverty do not find place in the enhanced focus areas of the ADB in the review of its strategy 2030. We urge ADB not to overlook the ADB's charter mandate of growth and shared prosperity. I would like to assure the ADB and all the members of the ADB of India's continued support to work towards accelerated, inclusive, and a sustainable and sustainable growth in Asia and the Pacific. Thank you, Chair. I thank the Governor for India. I call on the Governor for Australia. Good morning. Uh, it's my great pleasure to deliver this statement as Australia's temporary alternate Governor. I send the warm wishes of Australia's Governor, who could not join you here. Australia's Treasurer, Dr Chalmers, is preparing Australia's federal budget, which will be delivered in one week. Firstly, I express my great gratitude to the Government of Georgia for its warm hospitality and leadership as hosts of the 57th annual meeting. I also thank President Massa for your leadership of the ADB and your excellent team's work at this meeting. The theme of Bridge to the Future captures the important role ADB has in helping Asia and the Pacific navigate the challenges of the present while investing more prosperous, resilient future. We are optimistic about the economic resilience we are seeing in Asia and the Pacific. However, with shocks always just around the corner, it is that much more important to work collectively 
to ensure hard-won development progress is not easily eroded. On this, I would particularly like to highlight the perseverance and resolve the Bank has shown through multiple crises over the past few years. We want the Bank to remain the multilateral bank of choice for developing member countries in the region, and Australia remains staunchly committed to supporting the Bank's evolution agenda to achieve this. I applaud ADB's leadership in balance sheet optimisation and especially commend the Bank's efforts to unlock $100 billion US dollars in additional lending capacity over 10 years. This is precisely what developing countries have been calling on multilateral development banks to do. Deploying this additional lending capacity to support transformative climate action while helping address the region's development challenges will be a further test of ADB's ability to evolve. Australia knows that ADB and the public sector cannot meet the investment gap alone, and we are aligned with mobilising private sector action to meet the challenge of climate change. We are stepping up our international engagement on sustainable finance, and we stand ready as a partner to developing member countries and to the ADB. Australia is very proud to once again be pledging its support for the Asian Development Fund, which underpins the bank's operations in the Pacific. We are very pleased to see ADB listening to the calls from our Pacific members and applaud the announcement of new concessional lending terms for all small island developing states last year. Australia welcomes the report presented to governors on gender diversity. We welcome the progress on gender equality at the ADB Board of Directors and encourage the bank to align its senior staffing profile to its commitment to gender equality in the region. Finally, we recognise the critical role the bank has in the region in deploying development and climate capital and providing essential expertise in project delivery. I call on the ADB to maintain its commitment to deliver effective in-country engagement and project implementation to embed the differentiated approach the bank wants to have for our Pacific partners. Thank you very much. I thank the Governor for Australia. I call on Governor for Indonesia. Thank you, Chair. First of all, I would like to uh, extend our sincere gratitude to the Government of Georgia for the warm hospitality and exceptional collaboration with the ADB in organizing the 57th ADB annual meeting. I would like to also congratulate and support President Asakawa for his outstanding leadership in guiding ADB through various global challenges from pandemic now with the increasing high interest rate as well as the climate change. Also in his leadership in necessary reform which is undertaken in the ADB. I would like to also extend appreciation to ADB for continuous support to Indonesia through partnership in various development area and I'm glad to hear that ADB continues working despite climate change, also health, gender, education and food security. We all know that ASEAN region remains the bright spot uh, for the world economy, driven mainly by domestic demand as well as a moderate inflation. Fiscal position also uh, relatively prudent, especially for our country, which is uh, undergoing a fiscal consolidation after expansion during the pandemic. But despite all this bright spot, we are all confronting not only economic challenges, but also climate change challenge. Tackling these challenges requires substantial financial investment and effective operation. We should mobilize and redirect trillion of dollars toward combating climate change and fostering resilient development. As a global public good, climate change is our shared responsibility. That's why MDB should work together with the sovereign, private sector, philanthropists, and other financial sources in order to create the most effective blended finance. We would like to also support strongly ADB reform to be bigger, better, and more effective MDBs. Bigger mean financial capacity uh, through 
balance sheet optim optimization, which President Asakawa mentioned, that's already have 100 capacity billion capacity to lend. The problem more now on a preparation of the quality project and effective result, as mentioned by Alexia. We would like to also support ADB in providing concessional resources and blended finance, especially for a country which is really in a very specific situation need during this situation with a higher for longer interest rate. I would like to also mention in this intervention, the Indonesia has established energy transition mechanism and the leadership as well as involvement of ADB is really commendable. This is one of the most important on how ADB could support client country who also have strong ownership. So this is going to be a good pilot project that can be replicated to many other MDB's member. The country platform that we are establishing serve as an example on how ADB would be more effective in bolstering member ownership as well as country driven project. I look forward for the approval of the board on one of the very important tests of the retiring call, which is going to test many of our commitment. On a bigger, better and more effective, we appreciate a new operating model and we will urge ADB to measure the improvement of this operating model with KPI that can be measured as well as evaluated. We also welcome the capital reform that will unlock 100 billion new funding. We do hope that this bigger lending capacity will be matched with the quality of project preparation and effective result. Indonesia also supporting ADF 14 replenishment. The number may be not as big as our colleague, but uh, this is just to show that Indonesia continue believe that cooperation as well as contribution in any capacity is very important for continued collaboration and cooperation within the multilateral development bank institution. We would like to urge ADB to continue support our colleague from the Pacific, especially small island developing state, which require a very important as well as effective uh, intervention as well as fragile conflict-affected situation country. ADB should consider resource mobilization through co-financing and improve South-South and Triangular Cooperation Program. Lastly, I take note that in the income statement of ADB 2022 and 2023, there is a significant increase on the cost of borrowing, more than 2.7 times, and also income from the project as well as treasury. So this is a very extraordinary two fiscal year, which may not replicate it in the future. Any income revenue from the ADB should go to the member country again, especially for the most vulnerable. Thank you so much. I thank the governor for Indonesia. I call on for the governor for Canada. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, President Sakawa, Honorable Governors, distinguished, distinguished delegates, on behalf of Canada, I would like to thank the government of Georgia and the people of Tbilisi for hosting the 57th annual meeting of the Asian Development Bank. Amid a complex and evolving global development landscape, the ADB is undertaking a comprehensive reform agenda to ens ensure that the bank can deliver on its climate ambitions and respond effectively to the needs of its developing member countries. Canada commends the ADB for the important milestone achieved over the past year, including the launch of the bank's new operating model and the new climate change action plan. Canada values the ADB's constructive engagement in the MDB evolution agenda and its commitment to implementing the recommendation of the G20-CAF report. We congratulate the bank on its revised capital adequacy framework which is expected to unlock $10 billion uh, in, uh, per year in new lending capacity. We are also encouraged by the work to date on removing the ADB's charter lending limits 
and on exploring how to incorporate a prudent share of callable capital into the bank's capital adequacy framework. To find sustainable solutions to rising energy demands while meeting climate targets and creating more nature-positive economies is a shared global challenge. It is clear that public funds alone are insufficient. Canada fully supports the ADB's private sector shift, and we encourage the bank to redouble its efforts to mobilize private capital at a scale and address barriers to, pro uh, to private capital investment in developing member countries. Canada's partnership with uh, the ADB in climate finance is a good example of how we can innovatively work together to mobilize much-needed private capital to address the, clim the climate crisis. Our partnership has led to many firsts in the region. The first floating solar park in Vietnam, the first cross-border wind power plant in Asia. The demonstration effects of these initiatives cannot be underestimated, providing an important stepping stone to bringing similar initiatives to scale in support of sustainable economic development and transforming livelihoods. And we have shown that this can be done while providing a gender equality where taking an inclusive and just approach yields significant benefits to both economies and societies. To achieve all these priorities, momentum is key. The midterm review of strategy 2030 is a linchpin for directing the implementation of ADB's climate and private sector ambitions. This review will also be a pivotal, pivotal moment for the deployment of its uh, increased lending headroom under its revised capital adequacy framework. We look forward to working with the bank to ensure the success of the review. Finally, Canada congratulates the bank on having secured a successful replenishment for the ADF. This will allow for sustained financing to provide critical support for the most vulnerable people in Asia and the Pacific. Canada is steadfast in our commitment to the region, as outlined in our Indo-Pacific strategy, which guides our engagement for the coming years. We will continue to be an active, engaged, and reliable development partner in the region today and in the future. Thank you very much. Uh, I thank Governor for Canada. Governors, we will be having a five-minute break. I now call on the Governor for the Republic of Korea. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, governors and delegates, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to the government and the people of Georgia for hosting the 57th annual meeting. According to the recent Asian Development Outlook, the Asian Pacific region expected to have a robust growth of 4.9% this year. However, rising conflict and geopolitical tensions Pose, pose significant risks to the global economy, challenging our progress. In this context, the role of ADB is more vital than ever, and we believe that three points are keys to success. First, flexible and responsive execution of the strategy 2030 is crucial for ADB's development effectiveness. The rapidly evolving development landscape calls for MDBs to take on more responsibilities. In response, ADB is taking the lead in addressing complex development challenges such as climate change and regional integration. Korea's participation in the Climate and Sustainability Project Preparatory Fund as one of founding financing partners shows on our ongoing commitment to supporting ADB's strategy we will initially contribute $3 million. Second, mobilizing financial resources is essential to implement these strategic directions. Korea welcomes ADB's new capital adequacy framework. It allows additional lending capacity of up to $100 billion. We also commend the successful replenishment of ADF 14 to assist the region's poorest and most vulnerable countries. Following our participation in the EFCAP, Korea is also actively supporting ADB's effort 
by increasing the size of EDCF ADB co-financing up to $2 billion. Third, we look forward to seeing progress in ADB's new operating model. We appreciate ADB's decentralization effort to address unique needs in the region more effectively. Korea is to establish the ADB Korea Climate Technology Hub, which is called K-Hub, a new regional office model serving as a network hub for climate technology and expertise. We ask for the unwavering interest and support of ADB and other member countries for the success of the K-Hub. Thank you very much. I thank the Governor for the Republic of Korea. I call on the Governor for Germany. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would like to thank the Georgian government uh, for its hospitality and for the excellent preparation of this annual meeting. And the demonstrations that we all have witnessed do not harm that matter. On the contrary, a politically minded youth and a vibrant civil society are important assets for a brighter future. As EU President von der Leyen has said, Georgia is at a crossroads. The decisions will have to be made by the Georgian government, but our expectations are clear, and they include an unmistakable attachment to democracy and the aspirations for a European future. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, growth in Asia and the Pacific has been robust, and the outlook for 2024 remains solid. However, risks remain, and the poly crisis leaves no room for complacency. Progress towards the SDGs has been painfully slow. The climate emergency is being felt around the globe, with the most vulnerable hit the hardest. Tackling transboundary challenges must be a priority. A scaled-up effort is required to accelerate inclusive development and increase resilience to shocks. In this context, I appreciate ADB's efforts to place emphasis on gender equality. ADB has made important contribution and should scale up these efforts to make societies more just and strengthen their stability and economic success. Mr. President, fellow governors, the topic of our meeting, Bridge to the Future, conveys a message, a message of optimism. It includes the responsibility for us as shareholders to provide ADB with guidance in view of global challenges. Here, MDBs indeed play a crucial role. The protection and provision of global public goods is at the heart of the MDB evolution agenda. So let me thank you, President Massa, for your proactive efforts to advance this agenda. And ADB has indeed delivered first and foremost on the financial side of the equation. ADB's new capital adequacy framework will mobilize substantial resources. Importantly, ADB will need to safeguard its AAA rating and preferred credit status. ADB also has, was mentioned, successfully just concluded a record ADF replenishment. ADF 14 will give increased attention to addressing inequality, additional resources for SIDS, and support for Afghanistan. Let me again congratulate you, President Massa, on this landmark success. Mobilizing financial resources is key, but in itself not sufficient. The review of ADB Strategy 2030 needs to provide clear strategic directions. Our expectations in this context are very clear. First, we will continue to be a focus on fighting poverty and inequality, but this is not enough. Development achievements are being put at risk by global challenges. A clear commitment to support regional and global public goods is required. Investments in climate action, biodiversity, pandemic prevention, and promoting peace and security need to increase. And ADB's new business model needs to provide incentives for expanding related activities. Second, supporting transformative processes requires investments by the private sector. We had a successful meeting on that. I believe it remains very important. And briefly, the third point I want to mention, ADB's corporate results framework. We need to ensure that strategic directions are operationalized and outcomes tracked. And last but not least, no one MDB alone can successfully be itself in the endeavor of fighting global poverty challenges. 
So we need to work as a system, as it has been mentioned several times here, I want to underline that. So let me close by underlining that Asia and the Pacific is not just facing global challenges, it, is also, it also has wealth and creativity. ADB can indeed be a bridge to the future if it builds and further mobilizes this potential. I thank you all very much. Thank you. I call on the governor for Malaysia. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Masasugu Asakawa, President of ADB, distinguished governors, honourable board members, ladies and gentlemen. I am here to share with you that Malaysian economy normalised to 3.7% following a strong growth registered in the previous year. Amid challenging external environment like slower global trade, global tech down cycle, geopolitical tensions and tighter monetary policies, the growth moderated considerably. Despite the challenging external environment, we remain optimistic that growth in 2024 will be supported by resilient domestic expenditure, improvement in external demand and implementation of catalytic, catalytic initiatives under the various national master plans. Meanwhile, the IMF is projecting a rebound in global trade growth from 0.4% in 2023 to 3.3% in 2024. With the uphold of Malaysia Madani concept based on six core values, namely sustainability, prosperity, innovation, respect, trust and compassion, Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim and the whole administration always strive for the best and strengthen political stability to establish a harmonious, united and prosperous Malaysia. As a consequence, business confidence in Malaysia increased to 89 points in the fourth quarter of 2023 from 79.7 points in the third quarter of 2023. Nevertheless, we are not to be complacent and will continue to climb for higher ground. 2024 would be the government's implementation year. Malaysia is an open trading economy, hence external factors will directly affect the country's economic position the performance of the ringgit and trade. However, Malaysia's diverse economic structure and strong foundations built over the years have boasted economic resilience and put our country on a stable growth pathway. Bridge to the Future, the theme of the ADB 57th Annual Meeting, reflects the imperative roles of ADB to come up with more and more high-impact initiatives to execute and to spread the development of the Asia and Pacific region. On one side of the bridge is the past, on the other side is the future. Together with ADB, we build the bridge, we connect the bridge, we on the bridge and we will cross the bridge to brightest future. We take note on the transformative capital management reform initiated by ADB. 2023 marked the year of significant achievement with the approval of capital management reforms and unlocking $100 billion in new funding over the next decade. We welcome the updated capital accuracy framework, which will boost ADB's annual commitments by $10 billion. It is very important for supporting critical development efforts. In addition, the counter-cyclical lending buffer will serve as a commitment to aid developing member countries during crisis. Malaysia acknowledges ADB's commitment to combat climate change and aligning operations with the Paris Agreement. In 2023, $9.8 billion were recorded in climate finance from ADB with a balanced approach to emission reduction in adaptation strategies. In adaptation strategies. Along with ADB's Climate Change Action Plan for 2023-2030, strategies like Innovative Finance Facility for Climate in Asia and Pacific Financing Partnership Facilities and Climate Action Catalyst Funds have been showcased. My hearty congratulations to ADB and the Government of Georgia on the successful hosting of the ADB 57 annual meeting held in the scenic Tbilisi. On behalf of the Government of Malaysia, I wish to express our heart utmost gratitude for the perfect meeting arrangement and great hospitality extended to us. Terima kasih. Thank you. I thank the Governor for Malaysia. I call on the Governor for France. Mr. Chairman, President Asakawa, Honorable Governors, uh, Distinguished Delegates, I would like to express my thanks to President Asakawa 
and the Asian Development Bank team for organizing successful annual meeting. I would like to extend my greetings to the Republic of Georgia for the warm hospitality. The Asia-Pacific region continues to face a myriad of challenges alongside remarkable opportunities for growth and development. ADB has played a pivotal role in harnessing the potential for positive changes across our partners' uh, countries. In this regard, France praises ADB's continued commitment to supporting its developing members in tackling poverty and inequality to achieve an inclusive and sustainable economic growth. We commend the bank for being engaged in multiple reforms in line with the G20 evolving MDB's agenda. Expectation encompass an ambitious response to the Asia-Pacific region's financial needs. Five areas are of particular importance. First, France expresses gratitude for ADF-14 replenishment. This resource is key in addressing the developmental needs of the poorest and most vulnerable countries in the region, and we are pleased to see our renewed commitment to supporting their pressing development priorities. Two, we call on the bank to remain steadfast in its commitment to climate action and deliver at project and strategic level and commend the adoption of the Climate Change Action Plan. France expects ADB to support each borrowing country in the implementation of a long-term strategy together with efficient and ambitious uh, energy transition plans. We also encourage ADB to continue innovating and investing in initiatives such as Energy Transition Mechanism, Just Energy Transition Platform, and IFCAP to contribute efficiently to the transition to a low carbon economy. Three, taking action against climate change must go hand in hand with biodiversity conservation. This must become another priority and be strongly embedded in the bank's operation as recalled in the Canmin Montreal Agreement. France supports in this regard the ongoing review of the safeguard policy that notably focuses on the promotion of biodiversity conservation. COP16 should be the occasion for ADB and peer MDBs to publish their methodology and present quantitative targets and their, finance, their financing dedicated to biodiversity. Four, on the balance sheet optimization, we call on the bank to make the most strategic use of the additional funds allowed by the new CAF. We welcome the integration of exposure limits in the new CAF, commend the fruitful engagement in the G20 discussion on callable capital, and we are committed to support the process of removing the lending limits from ADB Charter and exploration of SDR rechanneling. We are looking forward to engaging in discussion on the upcoming capital utilization plan and expect the bank to present well-assessed proposal that will allow strategic allocation of the fund. Five, the norm implement implementation represents a significant milestone in the bank's effort to enhance its operational effectiveness. This includes strengthening the operation of its private sector division and mainstreaming climate and biodiversity throughout the institution and staff members' capacities. France also encourages ADB to pay a particular attention to gender balance Additionally, it's important to have strategic discussion on ADB's governance and business processes to ensure its operational efficiency. During the new Global Financial Pact Summit in June 2023, convened by France, with several key observations have led the groundwork for the Paris Pact for People and the Planet. Expectation towards MDB are high, and France is standing on the ADB side for the bank to fully deliver. Thank you very much. I thank the Governor for France. I call on the Governor for Pakistan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Chair, President of ADP, distinguished Governors, ladies and gentlemen. Let me join my esteemed fellow Governors in fel felicitating the Government of Georgia for hosting the 57th Annual Meeting in the beautiful city of Tbilisi, which nicely blends rich heritage with modern charm. 
The meeting's theme, Bridge to the Future, denotes a bold new collective vision and will for ushering in an era of cooperation and synergies to overcome today's key challenges faced by the world, especially the developing countries. This includes lingering and ravaging impacts of the pandemic, climate change, geostrategic tensions leading to commodity supercycle, soaring inflation, slow global growth, and increasing poverty. And Pakistan is no exception for these challenges. Ladies and gentlemen, as we are all aware, climate change is one of the defining challenges of our time. Climate vulnerable DMCs like Pakistan, with negligible carbon footprint, endure the extreme befittings of climate change. The cascading impacts of the crisis are compounding the economic challenges of countries like Pakistan, exacerbating water and food insecurity, as well as increasing poverty. No single country can fight, fight this intensifying menace alone, especially the fragile economies. So we therefore need to collectively address the barriers faced by DMCs in accessing the international climate finance and carve out an enabling, fairer, and easy to access system and does not, that does not aggravate the debt burden of DMCs. There has to be a clear distinction between the development and climate finance and equal distribution of resources for adaptation and mitigation actions. ADP, in its new outlook as a climate bank, has a critical role to play in this regard. The new elected government in Pakistan, amongst other numerable challenges, has also inherited the gigantic and resource-intensive re reconstruction and rehabilitation work in the wake of catastrophic floods of 2022. However, owing to the innate resilience of the people of Pakistan, and the unflinching resolve of the government, we are moving swiftly and decisively to implement a wide ranging structural reform agenda to unlock Pakistan's economic growth potential. The program is now well coordinated with our development partners, including IMF, World Bank, and ADB. The ongoing reforms mainly focuses on resource mobilization, energy, and privatization. And as a result, the economy is now firmly on a consolidation path with improvement in inflation and some recovery on the economic side. Pakistan greatly values and appreciates long-standing and trusted partnership with ADP, especially the strong and timely support provided during the pandemic and 2022 floods. As Pakistan firmly takes on its development challenges, we expect ADP to provide much stronger financial assistance and knowledge support in the areas of climate change, domestic resource mobilization, trade and investment, energy infrastructure, human capital development, and food security. We fully support ADP's ongoing institutional and capital reforms. We commend successful completion of the capital adequacy framework review and unlocking $100 billion in additional financing over the next 10 years to support DMCs. We appreciate historical replenishment of $5 billion for ADF and TASF, which will allow ADB to enhance its grant operations and concession lending. We expect that these additional resources will be deployed fairly and effectively towards high-impact interventions, including climate actions, in the most vulnerable countries. We also welcome the introduction of sovereign exposure limits framework to better manage concentration risk and ensure equitable access to ADP's resources while member countries. While we understand the need for managing concentration risk and equitable resource distribution, the implement, there's a need for managing the framework in a manner that does not in any manner disrupt the flow of ADB's assistance to low-income and high-risk countries where these resources are most needed to fight poverty, fragility, and climate change. Excellencies, the mission of building bridge to the future is fraught with multifaceted challenges that threaten our collective well-being and prosperity. However, these challenges are not greater than our collective will, capacity, and resources. By coming together as a global community and with shared sense of responsibility, we can surmount them and secure a better and brighter future for upcoming generations. Thank you very much for your attention. I thank the Governor for Pakistan. I call on the Governor for the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom thanks the Asian Development Bank and the Republic of Georgia for hosting this year's annual meeting. The UK values our partnership with the ADB, which is playing an important role in helping the region tackle the compound crisis it has faced over the last few years, including COVID-19, climate change, increased energy costs, and supply chain disruption. 
the bank plays a critical role, offering predictable and substantial long-term financing and technical assistance. Last November, the UK set out our approach in the International Development White Paper. <clears throat> our collective efforts to build a bigger, better and fairer international financial system are at the heart of our vision. A system that delivers for low and middle income countries and particularly for those that are fragile or affected by conflict. To that end, the UK is pleased to maintain our contribution to ADF 14 with a pledge of £120 million helping to achieve the largest ADF in history. This reflects our long-term partnership with the bank, where we're the second largest cumulative contributor for project-specific grants and trust funds. We thank President Asakawa and the bank's dedicated staff for driving forward an ambitious agenda over the last year. For example, releasing 100 billion of extra lending via implementation of capital adequacy framework changes, achieving the top ranking in the 2023 DFI A Transparency Index for sovereign lending, and making impressive progress in supporting developing member countries to improve disaster preparedness, including through disaster risk financing instruments such as contingent credit and insurance. In the upcoming year, the ADB must ensure it maintains momentum, tackling inequality and addressing global food security, especially in the most vulnerable countries. This includes exploring further CAF measures, including more systematic recognition of callable capital and providing additional concessional and grants financing for the most vulnerable countries. The ADB must also demonstrate how it will truly become the Climate Bank of Asia through stronger percentage-based climate finance targets, including for adaptation, by developing an innovative pipeline and by creating incentives which enable ambitious projects. The ADB should set a private capital mobilization target, recognizing the need for more private finance to fill the 1.7 trillion annual infrastructure financing gap in Asia, especially directed at more difficult frontier markets. The bank can stimulate this with increased risk transfer to the private sector through further support for initial public offerings and green bond issuances. We welcome, recent, we welcome the recent Global Emerging Market Risk Database GEMS publication of recovery rates and we urge the ADB alongside other MDBs to go further in publishing disaggregated data as soon as possible. The new operating model and ADB's evolution journey will set the bank up to deliver on climate and private sector ambitions over the remainder of Strategy 2030. It is essential that decentralisation is accelerated to put more technical staff on the ground, including in low capacity states. We look forward to continuing to engage with the ADB on these issues as the Strategy 2030 review process continues. I thank Governor for United, the United Kingdom. I call on Governor for Italy. Thank you, Chair, and let me start by thanking the government of Georgia for their great, great hospitality. This is an important year for the Asian Development Bank as we review Strategy 2030. This exercise should lead to a shared vision of ADB's evolving role as a trusted partner in Asia and the Pacific in the context of ongoing discussions to reform multilateral development banks to address development, while better integrating global and regional challenges in the operational model of the bank. In this process, we believe that the bank should remain firmly anchored to its comparative advantage in infrastructure financing and to its regional character. Mm -hmm. We support the proposed five areas where work should be accelerated. This must be an exercise in prioritization to guide resources, allocations and incentives and to turn goals into actions. Choices must be made also in the use of the additional lending granted by the CAF review. The review is a collective achievement that is unlocking hundreds of billions for development. As the G20 presidency that launched this exercise, Italy commends the bank's dedication to implementing many critical recommendations. I will focus on three topics in the perspective of the bridge to the future. First, we are glad to see that the ADB is taking forward its commitment to incorporate low carbon and climate resilience transformation in the development pathways of client countries. In 2021, G20 adopted an ambitious sustainable finance roadmap. 
The roadmap includes a number of actions to scale up sustainable financial flows. In this context, Italy has high expectations on the independent review of the multilateral climate and environmental funds and their better integration with MDB's work. Second, as co-chair of the G20 Joint Finance Health Task Force and as G7 presidency, Italy is committed to adding value to the work on pandemic preparing prevention, preparedness and response, calling for a coordinated approach by international actors. ADB's role in supporting this work across developing Asia is crucial. Third, this year the Italian G20 G7 presidency will focus on promoting a human-centered governance of artificial intelligence, making it a reliable, safe and sustainable source of economic, social, industrial and scientific development. ADV's discussion on how to use AI to accelerate inclusive development is extremely useful in this context. Let me conclude by commending the Bank for a successful ADF-14 replenishment. While the ADF expands its horizon to embrace the transformative objectives of the evolution agenda, its primary focus must remain the sustainable and inclusive development of the poorest populations. Thank you, Chair. I thank the Governor for Italy. I call on the Governor for New Zealand. Uh, Tina Koto, Honourable Governors and President Asakawa. It is my pleasure to make these remarks on behalf of New Zealand. I would like to extend my sincere thanks to the government and people of Georgia for the excellent hosting of this event and their warm hospitality and the efforts of the ADB staff in supporting them to bring the event together. President Asakawa, the global environment in which the ADB operates is fraught. Global conflict and geopolitical tensions present serious risks while the impacts of climate change, which poses an existential threat to many members, including our Pacific Island neighbours, are growing. And, all the, and although the pandemic's impact are receding, its effects are still felt, including in higher debt levels, which limit members' ability to respond to these poly crises. The ADB and other multilateral development banks have critical roles in addressing both the causes and impacts of these challenges. Since we last met, the ADB has made important progress. This includes the new capital adequacy frameworks, unlocking of an additional 100 billion in new funding, the bank's success in mainstreaming gender equality into project design, the bank's increased support for climate adaptation and mitigation, and the increased proportion of private sector financing. We also commend the bank's efforts and donor contributions on the ADF replenishment, which surpassed expectations. Chair, New Zealand would support the de bank developing a consistent, clear and understandable strategic framework that sets the direction of and provides incentives for the bank's work. We encourage the further embedding of a one ADB approach. We also support the decentralisation agenda. Getting staff closer to clients and projects will better enable the bank to realise the desired outcomes in all its work. The additional lending headroom accomplished by the bank needs to be managed by effective governance and strategic focus. There is more we can do in improving the effectiveness of the ADB board. A greater focus on portfolio management rather than individual project approvals and strategic decisions which will ensure the bank is positioned for the future need not be revolutionary. New Zealand also strongly supports greater collaboration and harmonisation between MDBs. We acknowledge in this regard the work done by the bank to date in achieving harmonisation with others and encourage the ADB to continue to intensify these efforts, including ensuring efforts in country prioritisation and programming are complementary and in line with each development partner's comparative advantage. A thriving private sector is essential to development and the climate transition where trillions are needed annually. We are pleased that the bank will soon finalise a private sector development plan to drive forward our collective ambition in this area. We would encourage this plan to underline its complementary role in supporting the climate change transition and the essential need to invest at all levels, from
from legislation and regulatory environments through to project prioritisation, financing, design and implementation. Finally, New Zealand again wants to challenge ADM members to be ambitious in what we can achieve, particularly in the focus areas of climate change, gender equality and private sector financing. The extra lending headroom arising from the CAF review, coupled with the framing provided by the midterm review of Strategy 2030 and the review of the corporate results framework, provides the opportunity to set out our, amb our ambition. Priority setting is one thing, but we need to identify our transformational projects that will materially demonstrate our collective ambition and how we are delivering against it. The time of small pilots is over. We now need to work at scale, with urgency and with a collective aspirational vision to adequately respond to the challenges we have before us. Thank you, Chairman. I thank the Governor for New Zealand. I call on the Governor for Taipei, China. Mr. Chair, Mr. President, Honorable Governors, distinguished guests, I would like to extend my gratitude to the ADB for the dedicated efforts in organizing this annual meeting and to the host country, Georgia, for their warm hospitality. We recognize the ADB's unwavering commitment to our region and commend the notable achievements made under the leadership of President Asakawa over the past year. We realize that urgent need to bolster climate finance lies at the heart of the call for MDB to tackle the climate emergence. We therefore welcome the capital management reforms and as enhancing the bank's lending capacity. In this regard, I am optimistic about the success of amending the Charter as a demonstration of our determination in addressing climate change issues. I also commend the successful implementation of new operating model last year. I believe this action will enable the ADB to maximize its contribution as the climate bank for Asia and the Pacific. Further, I would like to congratulate the ADB for the efficient organization of replenishment discussion we fully suppose its ongoing emphasis on FCAS and the CEDARS, promoting more funding for climate change adaptation and disaster risk reduction strategies. However, we are concerned about the procurement qualities in the Pacific region. We urge the bank to create fit-for-purpose procurement strategies and champion the adoption of quality-focused evaluation systems. Meanwhile, expanding market knowledge and sharing information widely will help attract qualified contractors from the region and beyond. I would also like to phrase the Board of Directors for their progress in gender diversity. In 2023, female representation across board roles reached a historic high of 40%, underscoring the bank's commitment to gender equality and the women's economic empowerment. We look forward to further progress in this area and stand ready to share our experience in promoting gender equality and diversity. As a founding member of the ADB, we have fulfilled all our membership obligation and responsibility and share the same goals as the ADB. However, we want to continue and strongly express our determination disagreement over the unilateral change in our membership designation. I would like to call on the ADB and all member countries to fully respect each other and ensure fair treatment and the equal opportunities to host and engage in activities organized by the ADB. In conclusion, the ADB has been instrumental in reshaping the developmental landscaping of member countries over the years. I reaffirm our strong support for the bank 
and which all member countries' ongoing success in their efforts for development, peace, and prosperity. Thank you, Chair. I thank the Governor for Taipei, China. Fellow Governors, I would like to clarify for the records uh, that ADB recognized a member only by the name of Taipei, China. I call on the Governor for the Netherlands. Good morning. Dear Chair, President Asakawa, distinguished Governors and Delegates, on behalf of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, I would like to thank the Government of Georgia for hosting the 57th Annual Meeting of the Asian Development Bank and for its warm hospitality. I would particularly like to thank uh, ADB Governor and Finance Minister Lasha Gucishvili and all those who have worked so hard behind the scenes to make this possible. Zalian Didi Matloba, thank you very much. I would also like to thank ADB President Masatsugu Asakawa all ADB management and staff for preparing and organizing the many meetings and events during this highlight of the ADB year. Today is the 5th of May. On this day, the Netherlands celebrates its liberation and the end of World War II. It's an important day for us to reflect not only on the importance of democracy, but also on the importance of providing room for the voices in our society, such as sp space for civil society. Room for diverse perspectives is an important foundation for multilateral organizations such as the ADB and enables us to provide the strongest solutions for the challenges we face. We find ourselves in the beautiful Tbilisi at the intersection of Asia and Europe at an important moment in ADB history. The last few years have been challenging ones for the region, among others due to the COVID pandemic the food and energy insecurity created due to the unprovoked and illegal Russian invasion of Ukraine, and the effects of climate change, which become more and more visible. In the midst of these challenges, ADB is reflecting on its 10-year strategy, and I believe most of us realize that we should prepare ourselves for different yet unpredictable future scenarios. The Netherlands believes that the seven priorities established by the ADB in 2019 should still guide the bank in achieving a prosperous, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable Asia and Pacific. We do, however, see four important considerations for ADB to refine its strategic approach and further accelerate its impact. Firstly, the Netherlands welcomes the important steps that the ADB has already taken in the discussion on MDB evolution. As part of this, the Netherlands also welcomes ADB's intention to work more closely with other MDBs on important topics such as safeguards, diagnostics, and the allocation of concessional resources. The Netherlands would like to underscore the importance of ADB maintaining its unique regional character and approach when it comes to the evolution agenda. ADB is and should remain the trusted partner in the region in areas in which it has a comparative advantage. Secondly, ADB's fruitful CAF exercise led to an expanded lending headroom of 10 billion US dollars. This increased lending headroom has significant implications for ADB's pipeline development. The Netherlands would like to stress that the focus of ADB should remain with the most vulnerable countries and there where it has additionality compared to the solutions provided by the markets. Moreover, we also believe that Group A countries should also benefit from an expanded lending headroom via increased transfers of net income to ADF in the coming years. A formula uh, in which the amount transferred will increase automatically with an increase in allocable net income would be suitable here. Thirdly, although the Netherlands fully supports the increased focus of ADB on private sector development, climate, regional cooperation and digitalization, we believe that the work of ADB on domestic resource mobilization should remain a key focus. Tax income is the most important and most sustainable form of development finance. Building capacity in public financial management is therefore essential for ADB to achieve its vision. Lastly, development challenges have become increasingly complex and multidimensional. Investing in climate adaptation, for instance, cannot be done properly without looking at the interconnection with food, water, energy, and biodiversity. This requires sector and thematic experts to look outside of their silos. 
In addition, we have seen that the nature of these challenges is ever more differentiated and require local tailor-made solutions. We therefore urge the ADB to build on the new operating model and strengthen cross-sectoral and locally-led design of its operations. We are very pleased to find us all in Tbilisi despite challenging times and work together to reach the SDGs and accelerate development in Asia and Pacific, a region which has shown remarkable steps. For the Netherlands, ADB remains an indispensable partner in this effort and we look forward to continue to work together. Thank you, Chair. I thank the Governor for the Netherlands. I call on the Governor for Bangladesh. Honorable Chair, esteemed President of ADB, Mr. Asakawa, Governors, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I would like to extend my appreciation to the Government of Georgia and ADB for jointly organizing 57th ADB annual meeting at Tbilisi. We are currently living in a world that is plagued by weak and uneven global growth, decades high inflation, reduced fiscal space, high real interest rates and elevated debt incidences. Facing all these odds, our assembling here at the crossroads of East and West drums up the urgency of building robust connectivity as well as consolidating our collective actions for bridging to the future. Excellencies, with a clear national vision and under the prudent leadership of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, Bangladesh rode on a high growth trajectory before the pandemic. ADB lent to us fitting support in this epic journey. However, for prolonged war, rising geopolitical tensions, and frequent raids of extreme weather events. Bangladesh, like many other developing economies, is currently experiencing persistent headwinds and continued volatility. For us, challenge is now how to manage macro fundamentals while pursuing a path for sustained higher growth. Our challenge now is how to garner additional funds while counterbalancing debt accumulations. Distinguished Presence, at this turbulent time, I want to place some specific proposals before this forum. One, geopolitical uncertainties are disproportionately afflicting impoverished segments of the globe. Taking macroeconomic predicaments into consideration, policy-based support and con concessional financing would be instrumental in tackling immediate economic concerns of developing member countries. Two, we expect that ADB's climate financing should be concessional. Moreover, as rightly expressed by our Prime Minister, climate finance must also meet three other criteria, sufficiency, regularity, and accessibility. May we, three, may we call upon ADB to undertake more projects to minimize existing digital disparities on the one hand and unlock the potentials of 4IR technologies on the other hand. Four, due to heightened volatility and a widening spread of commodity prices, our Prime Minister has given directives that not a single inch of agricultural land will remain unused. Aligned with our vision, we want ADB to undertake projects to induce smart technologies in our agriculture facilitate modern marketing facilities and eliminate, eliminate barriers to fully unlock the potentials of agribusinesses. Five, under fiscal constraints, Bangladesh seeks ADB's upstream knowledge support for framing strategies to meet up its immediate energy needs. Moreover, it wants ADB to bring more investment in renewable energy with appropriate tech solutions. Honorable Chair, as our own Asian Bank, to ADB we held higher expectations. I have strong hopes that this conference will set the just vision for us to steer through a muddled world, determine strategies for addressing real challenges, scale up concessional climate finance, and harness newer opportunities in digital economic cooperation and building regional connectivity. Thank you. I thank the Governor for Bangladesh. I call on the Governor for Uzbekistan. 
Dear colleagues, esteemed gardeners, President Asakawa, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I'd like to express our gratitude to the government of the Republic of Georgia and the Asian Development Bank for their hospitality and excellent arrangement of the 57th annual meeting. ADB countries of operation have enjoyed a great support in 2023 with the commitments exceeding 23 billion. And efforts made by the bank yielded over 16 billion in co-financing. We should congratulate ADB management for achieving 2023 target despite volatility and instability triggered by COVID and other factors. Overall increase represents 15% compared to 2022. It is important to note that the private sector support reached 16%. The four elements of Strategy 2030's vision are prosperous, inclusive, re resilient, and sustainable. It is closely aligned with Uzbekistan 2030 development strategy led by President Mirziyoyev. And, it is pri and its priority areas, strong public administration, strengthening entrepreneurship, improving transport and trade connectivity, and resilient economic and social development. ADB is a trusted partner that provides not only financing, but also advises us on various reform areas through the policy dialogue, which is tailored to needs and conditions. Dear participants of the annual meeting, we are aligning our national development strategies with SDGs and priority areas of the ADB support can make a significant impact. First is development of a green infrastructure where ADB can leverage its expertise and resources to help overcome critical bottlenecks in sustainable transport, energy, and urban development. Second, there is increasing demand for PPP projects and infrastructure and social sectors where private sector is playing a major role. We trust that ADB will continue increasing private sector operations with innovative financing instruments, as funding solution to foster private sector engagement is critical. Most importantly, working with ADB to promote regional cooperation and integration brings resource efficiency. As we look to the future, we believe that joint effort will be a key to achieving inclusive and sustainable development in Asia and Pacific. In my view, to further support the development of member countries, ADB's key areas of focus should include investing in people. We encourage ADB to step up efforts to support investment in human capital, paying special attention to the needs of the communities. It may also require support in addressing employment through small and medium-sized enterprises, which are the backbone of many developing, developing economies green, ambitious, climate change resilience. We believe ADB should continue its efforts to help countries take ambitious actions to combat climate change and ensure environmental sustainability. While, in while investing in advanced and climate resilient approaches to achieve goals of the Paris Agreement, continued efforts to develop green and livable cities will contribute to greener and more inclusive development, securing financial strength. We exhort ADB to build resilience, including economic and financial resilience, to enable partners' countries to withstand and recover from past, current, and future shocks. Continued efforts to help countries manage debt sustainable and develop a local currency and capital markets will be essential. Strengthening governance and institutions, as well as expanding effective and targeted social safety nets to better protect the most vulnerable, are important contributors. Promote sustainable infrastructure and digitalization. We welcome ADB's continued support of quality infrastructure. Supporting more equitable access to basic digital infrastructure will be an important element of these efforts. They'll accelerate efforts to harness the power of digital technologies to spur innovation that can drive progress toward SDGs, including access to the health, education, finance, and mobility. Collaboration among MDBs, 
MDBs shall continue to develop, to develop common approaches and standards in areas of collective focus, such as the quality infrastructure, impact investment standards. This will promote common approaches of, to harmonize SDG management results for tracking and transparent reporting of results. Together, they will provide financing, policy, and knowledge support to help countries realize the future they want, as set out in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Uzbekistan is committed to working closely with ADB and its member countries to build a better future for our people. Thank you for your attention. I thank the Governor for Uzbekistan. I now call on the Governor for Switzerland. Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, Honorable Governors, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Switzerland, I would like to thank wholeheartedly Georgia for hosting this 57th annual meeting of ADB for your excellent organization and really warm hospitality. And we also know that public demonstrations are part of a vibrant democracy. The Asia-Pacific region is confronted with many shocks. The continued repercussions of Russia's military aggression on Ukraine, rising geopolitical tensions and fragility, and the effects of climate change have a profound impact on the lives of the people in the region. Switzerland commends the ADB for being a reliable partner to support its member to deal with these shocks and not to lose focus of longer-term development goals. As part of the evolution agenda, the ADB, together with other NDBs, must step up support for global and regional public goods, especially for climate change, towards achieving our goal of eradicating extreme poverty and inequality. Systematic partnerships and close coordination with other development actors, the private sector and civil society are critical to have the best development impact possible. The ADB must remain selective and focus on the most pressing development challenges considering its comparative advantages and the division of labor with others. We commend ADB on its progress towards becoming the region's climate bank. We urge ADB to set a bold percentage-based climate finance target to ensure that the bank's climate finance keeps pace with its portfolio expansion. We welcome the progress in implementing the new operating model. It is important that this further enhances the relevance and effectiveness of ADB's business model by focusing on quality delivery and longer-term investments in the bank's areas of comparative advantages. We ask ADB to advance with both the cultural and digital transformation of its organization. It is critical that management and staff have the necessary skills and mindset to deliver better, bolder, and faster. We highly appreciate the ongoing comprehensive review of ADB's safeguard policies. This will allow the bank to continue to fulfill the highest environmental, social, and governance standards. We appreciate ADB's progress on implementing the recommendation of the G20 CAF review. Using existing capital more efficiently while preserving the bank's financial solidity is critical to meet the increased ambition to address global and regional challenges. We look forward to the forthcoming capital utilization plan outlining the use of these additional 10 billion US dollars in lending headroom per year. ADB can continue to count on Switzerland's support in building long-term resilience and development for the benefit of the people of the Asian Pacific region. We look forward to this continued close cooperation. Thank you. I thank the Governor for Switzerland. Governors, we will be having a five-minute break. After the break, the Governor for Switzerland, Mr. Dominique Baravicini, will take the chair. I now call on the Governor for Sri Lanka, please. Distinguished Governors, President Asakawa and ADB Board of Directors, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, on behalf of government and people of Sri Lanka, I would like to ex express my sincere gratitude to the government of Georgia 
and people of Tbilisi for their warm welcome and hospitality. We are grateful to ADB for the support extended to its uh, member countries in Asia and, and the Pacific, empowering them through multiple ADB products and further strengthening support through several initiatives, including enhanced lending. As we know, the Asia and Pacific region continues to face growing challenges and rebounding from constant shocks are challenging. Therefore, we need to design new strategies jointly to tackle risks posed by multiple challenges such as inequality and poverty along with dangers arising from climate devastation. While paying attention to uncertainties in the region due to conflict and volatile community prices. Reducing the impacts of climate change on the poor and the vulnerable people in the Asia Pacific region who contribute comparatively little to global carbon emissions should be a main focus in our development path. I take this opportunity to appreciate ADB's commitment of USD and 9.8 billion in climate finance in 2023 to help the region's developing economies reduce their carbon footprints and to mitigate the impacts of climate change. Further, the ADB as a regional development bank has a pivotal role to play in preparing its uh, members to face the global development challenges, providing adequate knowledge and expertise to mitigate challenges and ensure sustainable development in an inclusive and balanced environment. Many of the developing member countries find, find difficulties in moving ahead parallel to the global trends in the backdrop of rapidly accelerating te technological ch uh, changes. Country-focused approaches to match the global development agenda needs to be promoted through sovereign and non-sovereign operations of the ADB. The government of Sri Lanka is thankful to the ADB for the assistance and the guidance provided to Sri Lanka in the country's economic recovery and stabilization process and for being a steadfast strength to us throughout the most difficult phase in 2022. Exogenous shocks and policy missteps degenerated the macroeconomic conditions, resulting in hardship across all sectors of the economy and society as a whole. Since mid-2022, Sri Lanka commenced a deep and wide-ranging economic reform program with a view to addressing fundamental macroeconomic vulnerabilities that contributed to the economic crisis. The four-year extended fund facility of the IMF in March 2023 and both the ADB and World Bank supported our reform program. Fiscal reforms, monetary policy adjustment, financial sector stabilization, debt restructuring, welfare reforms, and governance reforms have been able to restore a significant stabilization in the economy. Sri Lanka achieved a primary surplus in 2023. Inflation reduced from 70% to 1%. The currency appreciated and recorded a surplus in the current account of the balance of payments for the first time since 1977. GDP, which contracted 7.8% in 2022, returned to growth in the third and fourth quarters of 2023, with uh, quarter four GDP growing, uh, growth reaching 4.5%. With the support of our partners, Sri Lanka has made significant progress in debt restructuring. In this backdrop, the assistance being provided by ADB in multiple reform areas that the government has identified is instrumental in the country's stabilization measures and setting a stage for economic growth. In conclusion, I wish to assure fullest cooperation of Sri Lanka to achieve ADB's vision and expects ADB to continue to play its catalytic role as a financing and knowledge partner for our region maximizing the development impact of ADB through support in strategic interactions and strengthening collaboration with member countries. Thank you. Thank you, Governor of Sri Lanka. I now call on the Governor of Hong Kong, China. Yeah, thank you, Chair. President Massa, Governors, Your Excellences, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is a pleasure attending this 57th annual meeting of the Asian Development Bank. And 
a delight to do so in Tilby's Georgia's magnificent capital city. This year marks the Hong Kong's 50th anniversary as a proud member of the ADB. We are proud too of our role as super connector and a multi-level bridge connecting the region and the world of opportunities in business and investment, technology and innovation, green transition and climate resilience building and more. In particular, the burgeoning Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area, a cluster of cities comprising Hong Kong, Macau, and nine cities in southern China, with an aggregate population of over 80 million and a collective GDP of nearly 2 trillion US dollars, offers a vast market for ADB members' products and at the same time, a source of capital seeking investments in your region. They will come with manufacturing capabilities, entrepreneurship, managerial expertise, and markets for your products. Hong Kong has the staunch support of the central government. Under the one country, two systems arrangement, Hong Kong continues to practice common law maintains free flow of capital, goods, information, and people, a currency pacted to the US dollar, and a low and simple tax regime. And our business practices is in alignment with the best international standards. Our platform is available to you all and stand ready to assist in your endeavors. By the way, Chair, I would like to highlight that there is no tax on wine in Hong Kong. <laughs> we are the perfect port for Georgian wines, which is increasingly popular in our part of the world. The future of Hong Kong has become more promising in the new era. Our role to connect the investors and capital markets of the mainland and the world is growing stronger as we deepen the mutual market access with the mainland. Coming to Hong Kong, companies can have convenient access to both international investors and capital and mainland investors and capital. Our technology and innovation sector is also thriving. We have invested over 25 billion US dollars in this area over the past few years. Our focus are in four areas artificial intelligence and big data analytics, fintech, health and life science, and above all, new energy and new materials. In the above and so many other areas, we look forward to working with our fellow ADB members to thrive together. In particular, contributing to the climate resilient Asia, the theme of this year's annual meeting we are keen on connecting knowledge, expertise, experience, and capital with green, green and sustainable projects in our region on our road to carbon neutrality. Together, let's build a bridge to the future for us all. My sincere thanks again to the government of Georgia and the ADB leadership for host hosting this year's wonderful event in TDBs such a wonderful city with great hospitality. Thank you all. Thank you, Governor, and thank you for this very useful information of your tax system in Hong Kong, China. <laughs> thank you. I call now on the Governor for Austria. Thank you, Chairman uh, and Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. President, distinguished government, governors. Uh, Austria thanks the bank uh, and the governor, uh, government of Georgia for this uh, meeting and for organizing uh, and host this meeting. This year's motto, Bridge to the Future, is an excellent metaphor for all of us if you want to tackle the ever-growing challenges of our time in order to not miss out on our common future. ADB, uh, is a very trusted partner in this endeavor for Austria. 
We welcome the steps that ABDB has taken so far to scale its financial capacity uh, and to increase its efficiency and efficient effectiveness as an institution. Here we particularly would like to thank the President and his team and congratulate him. However, this work, as always, is far from finished. More needs to be done in order to address the present development challenges for a prosperous and green Asia and Pacific region. The ADF 40 negotiations have shown that with the combined efforts of both the bank and its shareholders, an impressive replenishment is possible, focusing on the most vulnerable economies in the region. Let me make a couple of remarks. Uh, MDBs uh, have and must come together to tackle global challenges like climate change, rising debt and inequality, as well as the threat of future pandemics. MDB have to work as a fast and powerful system to address these mounting challenges and avoid unnecessary efficiencies. Creating high quality sustainable development impact needs not only ADB lending power, but also knowledge transferred and capacity building. This is key to securing a conducive environment for investments and the basis for much needed private sector engagement. Moreover, a shift to more effectiveness always requi also requires an adapted approach to better incorporating lessons learned through professional corporate knowledge management. We welcome here the midterm review of Strategy 2040 as an opportunity to refine and sharpen ADB strategic priorities and hope to see a clear percentage-based climate uh, financing target. Regarding the corporate results framework, we look forward to an alignment of indicators with the SDGs and a robust dashboard to allow for tracking ADB progress and improving the effectiveness and efficiency of its operation. In addition, there should still be room for complementary corporate targets uh, and policy pack uh, packages, for example, like in the context of ADF. Austria very much welcomes the ADB, that the ADB aims to become the climate bank for Asia. Against the background of the increased lending headroom, we expect ADB to ramp up its efforts for climate protection and biodiversity preservation and high quality infrastructure. Using new innovative technologies as well as nature-based solutions could be part of such an effort. Moreover, more attention should be based paid to comprehensive life cycle costs and asset management in order to reduce carbon intensive new construction. Let me touch also upon uh, private sector development, an area where we would see a lot of more potential and we have discussed it in, intensively yesterday. We, with more upstream activities for an improved regulatory environment, investment climate, and also with regards to the use of more uh, de-risking instruments, in close cooperation with other MDBs, we would see a lot of potential. Uh, finally, we highly welcome that the closing the gender gaps and investing in women's empowerment will remain a priority for ADB, be it internally as well as in project financed by the ADB. In conclusion, I very much would like to thank the government of Georgia and congratulate it to its recently achieved candidate status to the EU and the European common market, a common market which is based on common values and it, a common market which prospers because of its democratic values. Thank you very much. Thank you, Austria. I now call on the governor of Belgium, please. Mr. Chair, Mr. President Asakawa, Honorable Governors, distinguished guests, I will focus my intervention on three main points. Capital utilization, climate policies, and digitalization. The ADB has reacted quickly to the G20's urgent call to the MDBs to improve the effectiveness of their capital. We welcome the efforts made towards the implementation of the G20 CAPS recommendation that promises to free up substantial extra financial resources, and the upcoming capital utilization plan. However, ADB needs to set out in detail how it will prioritize the use of these extra financial resources. Belgium emphasizes once more the, the importance of a better prioritization in country strategies 
to make sure that the bank acts where it has a clear comparative advantage and creates the highest development impact. Food security should be among those priorities. Food insecurity, exacerbated by extreme weather events and geopolitical conditions, is undermining the prospects of development in many countries. We welcome the, ADB, that the fact that the ADB is on track, as mentioned by the President Asakawa, to deliver its commitment to invest 14 billion US dollars by 2025 to improve food security and to support measures to mitigate the food crisis in Asia and the Pacific. Belgium also welcomes the Climate Change Action Plan. In that vein, Belgium would like to see more of ADB resources going to green initiatives, and we encourage the bank to increase its ambition. As we all know, the fight against climate change cannot be won without the participation of the private sector. Therefore, the work of the private sector operations department is of utmost importance, and it's necessary to watch over and improve the effectiveness and results of that department. We also encourage management to have a closer look at the Office of Risk Management's overly prudent approach, which makes it very hard for the private sector operations department to operate, for example, in seeds and fragile and conflict-affected situations. The midterm review of the strategy 2030 is also very much welcomed. With regards to the climate policy-based loans, which are quite recent, we would like to see an evaluation on this specific instrument in due time to gain a clear understanding of the impact of using the PBLs for green purposes. We underline the importance of quality instead of quantity when it comes to the use of PBLs. Digitalization is also another priority Belgium is focusing on. We welcome the board working group that has been created on digitalization. The bank needs to become a stronger knowledge bank, and digitalization is, of course, a key element in that respect. The bank needs to act faster and more decisively to assist its members in accelerating the digitalization of their economies, in closing the, the digital gap, but also to urgently modernize its own IT platforms. Finally, I cannot end my intervention without thanking the government of Georgia for hosting this annual meeting and for giving us the opportunity to enjoy the warmth and beautiful of this and, and the hospitality of this beautiful country. Thank you very much. Thank you, Belgium. I understand that the governor of Sweden will now deliver joint remarks on behalf of the Nordic member countries of ADB. So please, governor of Sweden, you have the word. Thank you, Chair. Mr. President, distinguished uh, governors, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Nordic countries, Denmark, Finland, Norway and Sweden, I want to express our gratitude to, to Georgia for hosting this annual meeting in the beautiful and historical city of Tbilisi. We also want to thank ADB management and staff for preparing the annual meeting and congratulate ADB management and the ADF team for finalizing a successful ADF 14 replenishment. During several crises, the ADB has been instrumental in promoting support to the region and the DMCs. ADB is a key partner for cooperation at regional scale, uniting and consolidating donor efforts to alleviate poverty, combat climate change and its uneven impact, and promote economic resilience to ensure a brighter future for Asia and the Pacific. The ADB efforts during the COVID-19 pandemic and its continued support to help DMCs to recover are highly commendable. The bank has again proven to be an important knowledge, development and financing partner for the region and an important cooperation partner for non-borrowing countries. The ADB's ambition and vision for the strategy 2030 is much welcome. Continued work towards reduced emissions, adaptation measures, biodiversity, protection and restoration of ecosystems and support to client countries to develop and implement ambitious NDCs and long-term strategies is crucial to achieve this goal. We welcome the ADB work uh, on the G20 CAF recommendations and encourage management to continue its efforts to use innovative instruments to increase financing for development and climate action. This must be done without jeopardizing the bank's long-term financial sustainability and AAA rating. 
We also welcome the ADB's efforts on MDB reform beyond increased financing. Effectiveness and measurable results are key priorities for Nordic countries. Focus should be on efficient use of resources through enhanced prioritization and stronger emphasis on quality results under the new operation model. We urge the ADB to engage even further in making the MDBs work as a system with joint MDB country platforms, streamlined processes for DMC accessing financing, and common standards and safeguards uh, uh, and procurement. We commend the ADB for its high ambition to address climate change, its 100 billion uh, climate financing targets, and uh, ambition to become the region's climate bank. We encourage the ADB to go even further to become a leverage bank. The introduction of new and innovative instruments across the portfolio, uh, including for private capital mobilization, is key in order to help scale up climate finance. Climate work must be efficient, catalytic, and innovative, and help to mobilize private capital to accelerate the global green and just transition. A tr transition away from fossil fuels will be decisive in the fight against climate change, and a substantial part of the climate financing will have to be channeled to the energy sector. We look forward to further progress in the ongoing IFCAP negotiations. ADB remains a leader among the development finance institutions in mobilizing financial resources with focus on development impact, cross-cutting priorities such as climate change, gender equality, and inclusion, and green financing, as well as on the focus on private capital mobilization and job creation. It would be further beneficial for ADB to review its gender policies, moving towards a more inclusive approach that recognizes and accommodates diverse sexual orientation and gender identities. This step aligns with the goal of fostering greater diversity and inclusion. The ADB is well positioned to support the region in improving transparent governance and structural reforms, building institutional capacities, policy and legislative frameworks, and overall the rule of law. The benefits, this benefits not only foreign and domestic investments, but also domestic resource mobilization more broadly. We thank the management for the consultations held with the government and civil society stakeholders and efforts made so far to revise and improve ADB's environmental and social safeguards framework. However, across the region, we note that shrinking civil, civic space, including attempts to control foreign funding to civil society stakeholders, limit the capacity of the civil society to address development challenges. This, in turn, may slow down progress towards SDGs and inclusive development. It could also pose direct threats to the accountability mechanisms of the bank. Finally, ADB has made uh, great efforts to help countries with domestic resource mobilization, especially through the Asia-Pacific Tax Hub. Increasing regional cooperation on taxation is crucial. Economic growth provides the basis for development, but it does not automatically reduce extreme poverty or guarantee equal opportunities for different sections of society. We therefore encourage the bank to increase its effort in supporting effective and equitable tax systems in member countries. In closing, the Nordic countries stand ready to work closely with the ADB to contribute to resilient and inclusive development of the Asia and the Pacific region. Thank you. I thank the governor of Sweden, and I now call on the governor for Ireland, please. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Chairman, President Azakawa, governors, honorable board of directors, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> so, excuse me. on behalf of Ireland's Governor and Minister for Finance, we would like to thank the Government of Georgia for hosting this 57th annual meeting of the Asian Development Bank. We'd also like to thank you for the very warm welcome and great hospi hospitality in this wonderful city of Tbilisi. I would also like to thank the President and the management and the staff of the bank for the meticulous planning that made this annual meeting such a success. We commend the significant progress achieved by the ADB towards achieving the G20 CAF recommendations. The bank's updated capital adequacy framework has unlocked in a very impressive 100 billion US dollars in additional finance over the next decade. It is our hope that this headroom will benefit those who are furthest behind first in line with Irish development objectives. The most vulnerable will have to benefit from these extra resources and they will have to benefit as a priority. We look forward to seeing this outcome in the capital uh, utilization plan. I would like to congratulate the bank on the very successful 5 billion replenishment of the Asian Development Fund as it marks its 50th year. We were delighted to again make a contribution that maintained our burden share to the fund to help progress its very valuable work in the region. We welcome the ADF's 14 mandate for continued support to the region's most vulnerable countries, in particular states. 
moving forward as guided by our recalibrated Strategy 2030 and the revised corporate results framework, we must now utilize the bank's significantly increased financial headroom to, con con to continue to deliver transformative and resilient impact uh, in all the countries of the region. This will be important as the rollout of the new operating model continues. On climate, we welcome the Climate Action Plan and the bank's ambition to be a climate bank. However, we will encourage the bank to now push harder and further. We want to see the adoption of a strategic, sequenced and targeted programmatic approach. This would include effective technical assistance, supported by very clear diagnostics and adequate staffing, thereby strengthening the bank's overall climate portfolio. Like other speakers, we would recommend the adoption of a percentage target for climate, like other MDBs, rather than a monetary figure. This is especially relevant as overall levels of expenditure increase in the coming years under the CUP. This increased expenditure on climate will also have to include a greater role for the private sector. A, progr a programmatic approach to climate action is particularly important for small island developing states who face unique vulnerabilities. Significant and bespoke investment in clim climate ad adaptation, technical assistance and enhanced project preparation is critical in this regard. We must learn from our experiences and refine how to cons consistently deliver successful and sustainable results for SIDS and the region. We continue to advocate for the need to elevate the ambition of gender interventions to make meaningful and sustainable outcomes for women and girls uh, throughout the bank's work. We would like to see more projects that focus on gender equity as a team be brought to the fore, and this will progress needed, much needed transformational change. We will also encourage the bank to move to, to more deeply consider inclusivity as part of its devel development activities. Within the bank itself, the value of diversity should continue to be reflected in recruitment and retention policies. We continue to support the efforts made by the, the board's working group on gender diversity to improve female representation on the board, and we welcome the historically high level of female representation on this board. We support the prioritization of domestic resource mobilization by the bank and the work of the Asian Pacific Tax Hub. DRM is vital for economic growth, reducing poverty, and increasing prosperity in the region. Activities in this area will make a significant contribution to long-term sustainable finances, and we are strong supporters of this work. Ireland also welcomes ADB's continued private sector development shift, and we trust that it will progress in mobilising large-scale private capital and achieving sustainable market-based development to address climate change. Multilateral funds and banks can play a strategic role in making sure that private sector mobilisation is coherent with country ownership and supports the implementation of countries' NDCs, NAPs, and other climate-related um, national plans. This will avoid a piecemeal approach. We look forward to progress in the private sector during strategy 2030 midterm review. Finally, as security and development, uh, development resources becomes increasingly difficult, it is critical that the NDBs work more, co more cohesively as a system. Within the system, we would see the ADB as a key player and it must leverage its comparative advantages as a trusted regional leader in the areas of climate, gender and particular states to, de to deliver on public goods. However, the, the ADB must also encourage uh, to work with other complementary development partners to optimise development outcomes in the most efficient and effective manner. Once again, just thanks to the host country, bank management and staff, for a very success successful year, and we look forward to further progress over the coming 12 months until we meet again in this forum. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Ireland. And I now call on the Governor for Luxembourg, please. Mm. Honourable Chair of the Board of Governors, President Asakawa, distinguished Governors and Delegates, we would like to thank the Georgian government for its hospitality in this beautiful city and express our appreciation for the excellent preparation of the 57th annual meeting. We would also like to commend the Georgian authorities for having recently achieved EU candidate status. Mr. President, let me start by congratulating you for successful replenishment of the Asian Development Fund. This is of crucial importance as the world has become increasingly fragmented, marked by a proliferation of issues such as pandemics, climate change, poverty, inequality, conflict, and fragility. However, mobilizing more financial resources is not enough. Indeed, we need to use these resources effectively and efficiently. The midterm review of Strategy 2030 must include clear commitments to addressing cross-border challenges, un underlined by ambitious targets in its results frameworks for regional and global goods, uh, global public goods. Also, gender equality is and must remain a key focus area for ADB's operations. This bank has made important contributions towards reducing discrimination and inequality and should scale up its efforts, building on what has already been achieved. 
to ensure that ADB financing is as, is as impactful as possible, we see value in ever closer engagement with DMCs to strengthen their financial and fiscal foundations. Additional work on domestic resource mobilization, local currency financing, good governance, public finance management, debt management, and financial inclusion is of most importance. We are persuaded that ADB, together with the continuous support from Luxembourg for the Financial Sector Development Partnership Special Fund, will reap the benefits by putting financial inclusion at the center of its efforts. Finally, let me assure that Luxembourg stands steadfastly with the Asian Development Bank as one of our key development partners in Asia and the Pacific. Collaborating closely and effectively, we will emerge stronger from the global challenges. Thank you. Thank you, Luxembourg. I now call on the Governor of Portugal, please. Thank you, Chair, uh, Mr. Pre President, dear fellow Governors, dear guests. On behalf of Portugal, let me start by staying, thanking our hosts, the Government of Georgia and the beautiful city of Tbilisi for the organization and warm welcome um, of this annual meeting of the Asian Development Bank. Uh, we continue to live in, in challenging times uh, with the climate crisis uh, being more and more notorious, with the effects of uh, conflicts across the world and also the threats to values uh, in what concerns human rights, democracy and rule of law still being felt. And this context of polycrisis um, is arming um, especially the most vulnerable. In this context, uh, we commend the extraordinary work undertaken by the Asian Development Bank in 2023. Uh, we welcome the ADB's reform on capital management through the update uh, of the capital adequacy framework, thus expanding the bank's annual new commitments capacity to the 10 billion. We've all been uh, talking about this these past few days. Uh, and this will provide the much needed additional lending uh, headroom to address the, uh, the region's financing needs uh, for a resilient and sustainable infrastructure, poverty and inequality reduction, and also climate change action. On the operational side, uh, we note that the implementation of the NOM took place successfully. And we welcome in particular the decentralization process that will bring staff closer to the clients. That's the main goal, I feel, for the bank. We call on the bank to continue improving the, the work with the MCs in terms of diagnosis, uh, diagnostics, uh, capacity building, project ready, readiness, and monitoring and implementation, but especially uh, through uh, policy dialogue with, uh, with clients via those uh, country platforms that include all stakeholders, um, institutional ones, the private sectors, other MDBs, and also civil society. Uh, that's the way to, to improve project performance, we feel, and, uh, and also to, to have projects that have the right outcomes that are effective, truly impactful, and sustainable. We also feel that the current midterm review of the strategy 2030 and the new corporate result framework as well as the capital utilization pl uh, plan are the right opportunity for the bank to focus on areas uh, that will have more impact in the region uh, and also um, that we should do it with a higher level of ambition. Uh, in this regard, let me highlight some areas that we feel are of the of utmost importance uh, for the bank's activity in the upcoming years. First of all, climate action. Um, both in supporting adaptation but also um, mitigation. Uh, likewise, gender inequality must continue to be addressed to support uh, um, projects that are rated uh, as gender, gender equality theme. A third essential, essential point uh, is the support for private set, sector not only because it will unlock the much needed um, private sector resources, but also reach out um, the financing gap that cannot be made, met only uh, by MDBs. And last but not least, um, we highlight also as other colleagues the, the importance uh, and relevance to support domestic resource mobilization as fiscal consolidation and debt management uh, are the route to a sustainable development. Thank you, Madobla. I thank the Governor of Portugal and I now call on the Governor for Spain, please. 
Thank you, Chair. Um, let me start by again thanking the ADB and the Government of Georgia for the excellent of organization of this annual meeting. Um, the past year has been another challenging one for the global economy and uh, yet another example of the paramount uh, importance of international cooperation in addressing these uh, global challenges. The ADB has continued to play a critical role in supporting developing countries in Asia and the Pacific. Uh, let me highlight just a few of ADB's uh, recent achievements for which we would like to congratulate the bank. Um, the higher amount of co-financing co uh, mobilization, the new capital adequacy framework, the increase in climate figures, and uh, in terms of gender equality, um, that almost all 2023 operations contributed to reducing uh, remaining imbalances. But ADB is not alone in this journey, nor, of course, can it do everything on its own. Uh, looking forward, there are three key elements in this journey. First, uh, the cooperation among NDVs and international financial institutions is key. Second, uh, we need to bring the private sector on board, as we discussed uh, yesterday. And last but not least, member countries are a cornerstone in this process. On the one hand, developed countries can help with their expertise and, and knowledge sharing. And on the other hand, all the development efforts should be based on a country-owned process. Um, the Strategy 2030 Midterm Review, now underway, provides an excellent opportunity for the bank to deliver effective solutions. All priorities are important, of course. However, I would like to highlight four of particular importance for Spain. Uh, first, the need to continue the fight against poverty, where ADF 14 resources, as well as many of the bank's interventions, should play a key role. Second, the still needed focus on gender equality. Third, the work on making cities more livable. And finally, uh, we welcome the bank's efforts to address the complex issue of food security. Um, before I conclude, and related to this last issue of food security, um, I would like to take this opportunity to sh share with you a recent uh, development in Spain. Uh, we have just uh, introduced new contingent debt clauses in our bilateral sovereign lending, covering both climate uh, and health-related crises. But the most important innovation here is that we have also included food crises as a trigger event for activating these uh, debt clauses. Um, this and other highly interesting uh, issues related to development finance will be discussed next year at the fourth International Conference on Financing Development uh, to be held in Spain in July 2025. Uh, we hope to see you all there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Spain. I now would like to call on the Governor for Turkey, please. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. President, and dear Governors, I am honored to participate in the annual meeting of the Asian Development Bank. My graduate uh, extends to the Government of Georgia and the ADB for this great organization. Let me express uh, our continued ex appreciation to the President and the ADB for their steadfast uh, support and solidarity in addressing the multiple challenges in the region. As we continue to navigate through geo uh, geopolitical tensions, uncertain economic landscape, and the persisting climate crisis, ADB remains more crucial than ever. Let me focus on some key points. First, we commend the ADB for its visionary leadership and the robust financial commitments. The bank's level of commitments of $23.6 billion last year is a testament to its dedication to our collective prosperity. Second, we appreciate the strategic initiative, such as midterm review of Strategy 2030, the Climate Change Action Plan, 2023-2030, and the successful mid-year rollout of the new operating plan model. These efforts, coupled with the corporate results framework 2025 and 2030, demonstrate the bank's proactive stance in crafting impactful responses. Third, 
We acknowledge the new capital adequacy framework as a notable achievement. This initiative has unlocked up to $10 billion annually in addition, additional lending capacity. In this context, we fully support the steps taken toward removing the ADB charter lending limitation and encourage further innovative financial instrument in line with G20 recommendations. Fourth, we prize the successful replenishment of the Asian Development Fund. This replenishment not only enhances our capacity to address current and the future challenges, but also underscores the bank's effective stewardship in directing aid where it is most needed. <coughs> Lastly, we commend the bank's efforts to engage more effectively with the private sector. We also suggest both steps toward decentralization and the establishment of the regional hubs as outlined in the new operating plan. As always, Turkey looks forward to continuing our strong cooperation with the ADB, supporting its uh, endeavors to foster sustainable development across our region. Thank you. I thank the governor for Turkey and I now call on the governor for Armenia, please. Thank you, Chair, dear President Asakawa, distinguished governors and delegates, ladies and gentlemen. I extend our heartfelt thanks to the Asian Development Bank and the Government of Georgia for organizing this remarkable event. The thorough planning and flawless execution have made this event magnificent and memorable. We affirm our <clears throat> dedication to the ADB 2030 strategy. The Government of Armenia wholeheartedly aligns with Strategy 2030 targets, reflecting them in our key priority policies and projects. An expression of our commitment to the ADB values is our decision to join the ADF 14 replenishment as a donor. During last year's annual meeting, we declared our intention to join ADF 14, and on Thursday, we already announced our government's decision to allocate $1 million U.S. million to ADF. As we celebrate our achievements, we must also acknowledge the ongoing challenges we are all facing. Climate change possesses a major threat. Economic prospects remain uncertain. Geopolitical turbulences affect billions of people. And regional connectivity and value chain disruptions are pressing issues. These challenges underscore the need for united action and innovative partnerships. As geopolitical tensions rise and conventional trade routes encounter increasing challenges, the South Caucasus and Central Asia are emerging as critical alternative trade routes between East and West. This shift is exemplified by the Middle Corridor Initiative, which seeks to reestablish these regions as the key trade pathways. This is why we came up with the Crossroads of Peace initiative, which can not only complement the Middle Corridor, but also facilitate regional dialogue and bring long-term peace to our region. In this context, <clears throat> I want to underline that the ongoing border delimitation process with Azerbaijan are central to these efforts. By establishing redundant transport routes in the region, we can enhance the geopolitical significance of the South Caucasus and unlock tremendous growth potential that has been hindered by years of conflict. Existing transport infrastructure, once unblocked, could connect with Turkey and Azerbaijan with minimal or no additional investment, enabling operations to commence in a very short time and boosting the middle corridor's capacity. The North-South Highway being implemented in collaboration with ADB is a crucial component of this initiative, and I am hopeful that we will soon sign the agreement with ADB to commence construction of Southern segment. We are delighted with our partnership with ADB, where we have a very extensive agenda in both sovereign and non-sovereign operations. We are confident that the work being done, not only in our country, but also for the whole region, through large-scale financing of relevant infrastructure and, and comprehensive knowledge products will play a vital role in our region and contribute to the successful fulfillment of Strategy 2030 goals. Thank you for your attention and we look forward to our continued cooperation for peace and prosperity. Thank you, Governor. 
I now call on the governor for Nepal, please. Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, distinguished governors and delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I sincerely appreciate the ADB, the government, and the people of Georgia for hosting this meeting. I wish to express my profound gratitude for the proactive role undertaken by the Asian Development Bank in adopting operational priorities best suited to the specific needs of the member countries to translate its strategy 2030 into action. I appreciate the initiative taken by the ADB in recognizing itself as Asia and the Pacific's Climate Bank and driving innovation and financing to meet the challenge of climate change. Our focus is on aligning financing with our current projects, improving infrastructures, and addressing climate change in an integrated manner. Thus, we urge the ADB and the MDBs to prioritize financing for coordinated, focused, and tangible climate actions that complement current initiatives while maximizing infrastructure projects that also contribute positively to climate objectives. Mr. Chairman, with political stability, Nepal stands at a pivotal juncture in its pursuit of economic growth and prosperity. The government of Nepal is dedicated to ensuring good governance, social justice, and economic prosperity. Our efforts are directed towards achieving sustainable development goals with equal emphasis on climate action, social inclusion, and economic development. The ripples of COVID-19 in the Nepali economy have been exacerbated by global economic challenges and headwinds. Nepal, like many others, faces slow economic growth and fiscal constraints due to a contraction in economic activities with subsequent revenue deficits and increasing debt obligations. To achieve our goals of economic prosperity, graduation from LDC status, and meeting the sustainable development goals, we face a significant funding gap that cannot be filled solely through public finance. We need to address this sizable financing gap by leveraging investment from private capital. We have recently hosted third investment summit in Kathmandu to highlight Nepal's favorable investment environment. I believe that ADB can play a significant role in mobilizing technical assistance and knowledge solutions to design attractive investment arrangements in sectors where Nepal has comparative advantage such as tourism, hydropower, and information technology. Considering the huge financing needs and underlying fiscal challenges, I call upon the ADB and other development partners to substantially increase concessionary resources. The ongoing ADR 14 and IDA 21 replacement are a testimony of our commitment towards the development of low-income countries. I believe Nepal's homegrown, green, resilient, inclusive development approach provides a partnership platform to all development partners to join hands in delivering development impact in necessary scale and speed. Furthermore, given the effectiveness of SASEC initiative in enhancing inter-regional trade and connectivity, we urge further efforts for deeper economic integration to establish South Asia as an emerging region. We now need to focus on enhancing connectivity, innovation, and digitalization by leveraging our collective strength for the benefit of the entire region. Finally, I extend my heartfelt appreciation to all the governors for their invaluable perspectives and contributions. I'll again extend my gratitude to the Asian Development Bank for their enduring collaboration and assistance to Nepal and for being a trusted partner during our development journey. In closing, I wish to express my sincere thanks to President Mr. Asakawa for his effective leadership and to the entire ADB team for their unwavering commitment and dedication to the development and prosperity of the Asia and Pacific region. I thank you all. Thank you, Governor. Let me now uh, call on the Governor for Cambodia. Please, you have the floor. Mr. Chairman, President Asakawa, Governors, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank uh, to the government of Georgia for the warm hospitality and the arrangement for the ADB's 57th annual meeting in Tbilisi. With the theme of Bridge to the Future, 
we are reminded of our collective mission to shape a path towards a brighter tomorrow for all in Asia and the Pacific. Cambodia remains dedicated to dialogue and action on regional connectivity and climate change. One of our top priorities is fostering low carbon through what we call smart connectivity. Cambodia recognizes the importance of strong cross-border infrastructure, seamless trade, digital innovation, and regional public goods to unlock our regional, region's potential. And, and Cambodia is ready to collaborate with neighbors and partners to prioritize sustainability, inclusivity, and resilience for a prosperous Asia-Pacific region. Furthermore, we recognize the urgent need to address the escalating challenges posed by climate change. It is not just a problem for the future, it is affecting us right now. This is why Cambodia is fully committed to the goals of the Paris Agreement and stands in solidarity with those most vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. ADB plays a crucial role in driving sustainable development forward, and Cambodia is eager to collaborate closely with the bank and its member states to achieve our shared objectives. By pooling our resources and expertise, we can make a real difference in the lives of millions across our region. In Cambodia, we have already taken significant steps to, to combat climate change. We have set ambitious targets to reduce emissions and become carbon neutral by 2050. We have also joined initiatives like the nationally determined contribution, demonstrating our commitment to building economic resilience in the face of environmental challenges. In addition, we are mainstreaming climate adaptation in public investment, national financing strategies, and government securities roadmap. It is important to note that while Cambodian carbon footprint is relati relatively small, the impacts of climate change are significantly huge. To achieve our 2030 targets, we would like to call ADB, the partners and donor nations to augment grant and loans allocations to Cambodia while ensuring that loans remain highly concessional. Private sector participation, which includes FDI, non-sovereign loans, and PVP, are crucial to accomplish our, wish, our 2030 milestones to become upper middle income country and 2050 vision to become high income country. In closing, I want to express my appreciation for the ADB's remarkable achievements in 2023, particularly in the realm of climate financing. I also extend my heartfelt thanks to the 14th recognition of ADF and the 18th allocation of the TASF for the generous support. As we embark on this journey together, let us reaffirm our commitment to building bridges, bridges that connect us, bridges that unite us, and bridges that lead us to a sustainable, brighter future. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank the governor for Cambodia. And I understand now that the governor for Samoa uh, will deliver joint remarks on behalf of the Pacific developing member countries of ADB, right? Please, you have the floor, governor of Samoa. Chairman, President Askawa, esteemed fellow governors, board of directors and management delegates, talo falao. It gives me great honor to present the joint statement on behalf of my fellow governors from the 14 Pacific developing member countries of Pacific family that are here in Tbilisi, Georgia. First, I take this opportunity to thank the government and the people of the Republic of Georgia for the hospitality that has been extended to our Pacific family since we arrived. Mr. Chairman, President, our Pacific Statement will focus on three key thematic areas. Climate financing, private sector development, financial services. 
In addition, we will also touch briefly on regional cooperation and the new operating model, NOM. We acknowledge and appreciate the ADB's aspiration and commitment to be the climate bank for the region and commend you and management for reaching a cumulative total of 30.8 billion in climate financing at the end of 2023. In saying that, we challenge ADB to take the lead as a responsive financial institution by ensuring that practical and fit for purpose policy are in place for small island developing states, or SIDS, especially the Pacific. Given we are at the forefront of climate change impacts, we applaud the bank's leadership in spearheading collaboration with the Green Climate Fund, or GCF, for a specific allocation for Pacific countries that would complement the ADF in financing country and regional development. Our 14 island countries are spread across approximately 317,000 square kilometers of the Pacific Ocean, which means both exposure to the impact of climate change and the ability to adapt are disproportionate across the region. Our smaller members are facing much more extreme impacts of climate change while finding it more difficult to access climate financing. Chairman, Mr. President, in February 24, we all bore witness to the devastation that the spring tides had on our islands, especially low-lying atolls. These phenomena continue to intensify and have substantial impacts on all sectors of our economies. Seawater intrusion and an increase in soil salinity exacerbate health issues and threaten food security, which requires government to stretch limited resources to address these issues beside ensuring investment in climate resilient infrastructures while maintaining the focus on education and health for people-centered development with disability inclusion. Additionally, these limited resources are stretched thinner to cover servicing of loans obtained to help address the impacts COVID-19 pandemic and climate change, thereby worsening debt situations for some of our Pacific member countries. In that regard, we thank the ADB for the increase in loan concessionality for SIDS and ask that efforts continue for increase in grants availability, as well as to leverage additional financing from other climate funds, MDPs and development partners. The Pacific strongly supports the consideration of the vulnerabilities of SIDS in the development of the bank's policy, mainly the concessionality framework for ADF resource allocations for SIDS and the Pacific. We encourage the collective responsibilities of ADB, other MDPs, and international development organizations to ensure that an approved multidimensional vulnerability index, like the UNMVI, recognizes vulnerabilities of SIDS in terms of exposure to impacts of climate change and the frequency of natural disasters, remoteness and connectivity, population size, and the global impact due to reliance on imported goods and services. In addition, we would like to see more of the expediency illustrated during the pandemic where ADP led in ensuring that funds were made available immediately when critical. As chairman and President, the pandemic has re-emphasized for us the need for economic diversification and gradual shift from over-reliance on traditional sectors as seen by the impact that the loss of tourism had on our economies. To ensure this, we understand that private sector-led growth is key. While we appreciate the efforts made by the ADB through policy and technical assistance extended over the course of the years, we would like to see an increase in momentum and support for private sector projects in other key sectors that include renewable energy, agriculture, manufacturing, and information technology. We believe these are, these are transformative sectors for our small economies and key drivers of growth in the long term. Instrumental to private sector development is ensuring access to capital investment opportunities an issue that our financial sectors continue to struggle with. We therefore seek ADP's continued support for our banking sectors, particularly in securing corresponding banking partners 
to help increase investment within our nations and raise opportunities for local businesses. The loss of correspondent banking relations and de-risking of our remittance service providers remain a serious threat to our region's financial viability and stability, despite our individual efforts to comply with international standards and improve our respective financial infrastructures in the fight against money laundering and terrorism financing. We acknowledge the strong interest by the United States of America and Australia on this development issue, and we look forward to practical solutions at the Pacific Banking Forum scheduled in July this year. We also welcome the World Bank's recent CPR initiative to address this developmental challenge for the Pacific. That being said, Mr. President, we strongly believe that this critical issue needs innovative solutions and to formulate a consolidated regional response requires the collective efforts of ADB and other MDBs and advanced economies, particularly the USA, Australia and New Zealand for our region, together with the Pacific SIDS. ADB's continued support in this long outstanding issue will be greatly appreciated. Mr. Chairman and President, for Pacific SIDS, access to finance for micro, small and medium enterprises is essential to private sector development. A more conducive environment to grow supported by targeted capacity and skills development for our private sectors. In addition, strengthening the, private, the public private partnerships between government entities and the private sector to deliver the services and goods would help develop capacity of private sectors. A risk sharing approach and most importantly fostering partnerships with the private sector. It is our position that this is crucial to increasing opportunities and raising competitiveness of our private sector when it comes to the large project procurements both nationally and regionally. Therefore, we ask for increased access of SIDS to the private sector window through grants and highly concessional loan terms to support our private sector entities as well as an, as an option to underwrite risks to support private sector entities' access to financing, therefore reducing the reliance and expectation on government for guarantees that would further deter deteriorate our debt sustainability position and fiscal burden. Mr. Chairman and President, we are encouraged by ADB's support for our Pacific Regional Infrastructure Principles, as well as the new partnership between the Tax Hub and the Pacific Islands Tax Administration Agency. As a region, we invite the ADB to continue this support towards increased regional cooperation, particularly in working closely with the Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat in the implementation of our 2050 Blue Pacific Strategy. Chairman, President, deeper and meaningful regional integration is essential for fostering solidarity and unity in the Pacific. We are keen to see ADB undertake regional projects in fields such as education, health and transportation, which would contribute to the development of a more interconnected and resilient Pacific community. We strongly advocate for free for visa-free travel between Australia, New Zealand and Pacific Island states as part of efforts to ease the travel process and strengthen re regional ties. We believe that facilitating easier movement of people will further enhance regional integration and cooperation. The recent surge in drug seizures in the Pacific is deeply concerning. It underscores the urgent need for enhanced regional cooperation and capacity building measures to combat transnational organized crime and strengthen security of our borders. We must work collaboratively to address and the root causes of drug trafficking and strengthen law enforcement efforts to disrupt illicit drug network operations within our region. The statements and decisions made in this annual meeting come with greater responsibilities that need greater ambitions, increased commitments and bold actions from everyone. The member countries, ADB and all development partners. The Pacific appreciates and acknowledges the increase and scale up of resources for the ADF 14 in order to address the increasing development challenges of eligible members. 
Mr. Chairman and President, as the incoming chair for the Commonwealth Heads of Governments meeting, CHOCOM, that will be hosted in Apia in October 24, let me provide a brief update on behalf of our Government of Samoa for our members' information. Our theme for the Samoa CHOCOM 24 is one resilient common future, transforming our Commonwealth. Our focus is on resilience as a unifying approach that transcends the humanitarian development, human rights, peace, and security pillars. The theme we have chosen, chosen will allow us to look at all the key pillars of the Commonwealth through a resilience lens. We strongly believe that we would focus on solutions and accelerated actions. We speak from the collective experience of the Blue Pacific Continent where our Pacific Island Forum leaders have declared climate change as the single greatest threat to the security and well-being of our people, given the ocean makes up 96% of our Blue Pacific region, and we are amongst the first to most immediately suffer the impacts of climate change. Lastly, we commend the ADP management for progress made to date in, in the norm. However, we would like to see a swifter operation within the Pacific, expediting much needed expertise to our regional hub office must be complemented by an increase in opportunities for people from our region to join the ADP team, bringing their experiences to the bank's knowledge base. In closing, I would like to thank you and the management for the achievement made in 23. The revised capital adequacy framework improved concessionality, midterm reviews of the ADF and the ADP strategy 2030, the revised safeguards framework as well as the rollout of the norm have all been welcomed as policies to improve the bank's responsiveness. We ask that the ADP continues to take a differentiated approach when it comes to the Pacific, given our diverse challenges, mainly from the impacts of climate change and pace of economic development. We look forward to ADP's support in building that bridge to the future that will bring the world closer to the Pacific. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Governor. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be having a five-minute break, please. And after the break, the Governor of Georgia, Honorable Lasha Kutsishvili, will take the chair again. Thank you. So I call on the Governor for Bhutan. Mr. Chairman, President, uh, Mr. Asakawa, Governors, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to convey warm greetings from His Majesty the King, the Royal Government and the people of Bhutan. I express my gratitude to the Asian Development Bank for hosting delegates from across the globe and the Government of Georgia for host hosting this year's annual meeting at Tbilisi. With the 57th annual meeting of the Asian Development Bank under the banner Bridges to the Future, I'm reminded of the transformative power of ADB. For instance, the support of ADB in developing our hydroelectric uh, sector has been instrumental in making Bhutan a next net exporter of clean energy. Just as bridges connect lands, ADB bridges the gap between vision and reality for a sustainable future. In Bhutan, a land renowned for its majestic landscape and rich cultural heritage, we understand the importance of building bridges, both literal and metaphorical. Our commitment to sustainable development, guided by our principles of gross national happiness, underscores our belief in fostering holistic progress that respect the interconnectedness of economic, social, and environmental well-being. As the alternate governor of Bhutan to the Asian Development Bank, I stand before you today to re reaffirm our unwavering dedication to the shared mission of promoting inclusive growth, resilience, and sustainability across Asia and the Pacific. In this era of unprecedented challenge, from the aftermath of the pandemic to the urgent imperative of climate actions, we recognize the imperative of work, working together across borders and sectors to build a resilient and equitable future for all. The theme Bridge to the Future encapsulates not only the transformat transformative potentials of infrastructure investment, but also the power of collaboration, innovation, and foresight in shaping a better tomorrow. Just as bridges span chasms and connect a disparate landscape, 
so too must our collective effort bridge that divide and create pathways to prosperity for every citizen, leaving no one behind. Anchored on the visions and values of gross national happiness, uh, Bhutan is launching the Gelifu Mindfulness City on a vast flatland covering more than 2,000 square kilometer, sandwiched between a nature reserve and a wildlife sanctuary. This mindfulness city serves as an embodiment of the Bhutanese concept of bridge as it will link South Asia to Southeast Asia. Connecting people across space, time, and traditions, encompassing conscious and sustainable businesses, it promises to build a future of unprecedented well-being, progress, and prosperity. I join other fellow governors in commending the ADB for the successful ADF 14 negotiation. The ADF 14, with a historic record of US five billion in replenishment will go a long way in meeting the critical development financing needs of the vulnerable developing member countries. Bhutan being a landlocked small DMC, faced with the impact of climate change and disaster risks, beside other challenges, expects to, imminence, expect to immensely benefit from the ADF 14 resources. As we embark on this collective endeavor, let us draw inspirations from the resilience and the ingenuity of those who have come before us. Let us heed the lessons of history and the imperatives of the present to forge a path forward that's grounded in solidarity, sustainability, and shared prosperity. In closing, let me express my profound gratitude to the Asian Development Bank for its steadfast partnership and unwavering support in our shared quest for a brighter future. Together, let us build bridges that stand as testaments to our shared commitment to leaving a legacy of hope, opportunity, and inclusive prosperity for generations to come. Thank you, and Tashidele. I thank the governor for Bhutan. I call on the governor for Maldives. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Chair of the, Chair of the Board of Governors, the Minister of Finance of the Georgia, President of the ADB, Distinguished Governors, Assalamu alaikum and very good afternoon. It is a great pleasure to join this business session of the 57th of ADB annual meeting. During this time of evolution of MDBs, we would like to congratulate ADB for taking a proactive role in preparing to meet the challenging demands of many member countries in relation to provision of global public goods on the climate change and global healthcare front. The board is welcome to the decision of the ADB to raise lending capacity by an additional 100 billion US dollars subsequent to the capital adequacy framework review last year. Further, the introduction of new climate financing facilities, such as the effect we believe is a landmark moment for the ADB, as it will form an important vehicle in the delivery of 100 billion US dollars in the climate financing between 2019 and 2030. The ADB is the premier multilateral partner of the renewable energy related investments in the Maldives. Over the, last, next, over the next five years, as declared by the President of the Maldives at the COP28, we aim to meet 33% of our energy requirements through renewable energy generation. The Maldives spent 10% of its GDP on fuel imports. Consequently, our central bank reserve and fiscal balance are particularly sensitive to the shocks to the global fuel price. And with the elevated level of debt post-pandemic, the Maldives is now in need of severe fiscal reforms to ensure macroeconomic stability in the immediate and medium term. As a country structurally reliant on the global tourism industry, the Maldives views its this opportunity to join the ADB annual meeting in Georgia with excitement and focus. Surely, in the Georgia economic recovery, post-pandemic with double-digit growth and sizable reduction in its debt to GDP lies important lessons for countries facing fiscal constraints and elevated debt. Excellencies, at this juncture, we believe it is important to be mindful of the socio-economic and political realities that we face as developing nations. Even in the face of shrunken fiscal pace, it is important to st strategically invest in energy and other important infrastructure to ensure accelerated and inclusive economic growth. To meet these mounting demands, 
we urge ADB continue consider, considering creative financing mechanism and instruments to channel investment to bridge our economies from the pre-pandemic and COVID era to the future. Acknowledging the urgent need for economic reform, the Maldives is embarking on the series of serious macro-physical policy adjustments with broad support of MDBs, and we sincerely hope that the ADB will aid us in building a bridge to the future that ensure climate resilience, fiscal stability, and debt sustainability. Thank you, and wassalamu alaikum. Thank you, Governor for Maldives. I call on Governor for Duval. Uh, Chairman, <clears throat> Mr. President of ADB, fellow governors, ladies and gentlemen, let me first acknowledge the generous hospitality the host country, Georgia, has rendered to us an excellent organization of meetings and events throughout this week. As this is my first uh, Asian Development Bank uh, annual meeting as governor, I wish to acknowledge and commend ADB for its uh, support on a number of uh, issues and challenges faced by each developing member country. It is my intention to engage in more similar meetings and to build on the outcomes from this week's meetings. Tuvalu is among the greatest vulnerable member, members of ADB against impacts of climate change and external shocks. For Tuvalu, climate change remains the single biggest threat both to our existence, existence and survival. The frequency and intensity of natural disasters continue to create disproportionate devastation to Tuvalu. Mr. Chairman, from climate change, apart from climate change, there are real threats that we are now facing with revenue loss, higher cost of living, and energy push inflation. Apparently, geopolitical tensions have exacerbated these challenges on developing member countries like Tuvalu, and thus post additional risks on fiscal buffers and the delivery of essential services. The performance of economic activities has remained at a modest level post-COVID and continues to face the harsh reality of higher shipping costs and supply chain uh, disruptions. Despite the uh, challenging environment, I am pleased that ADB has stood alongside Tuvalu and fostered remarkable engagements through technical consultations and project implementations targeting critical sectors. The Asian Development, Development Fund, ADF, allocation is a transformative mechanism, mechanism capable of creating life-changing impacts on the wider communities and to value appreciate the contributions of member countries and the pledges committed to the ADF 14. Tuvalu commends ADP's position to become the climate, climate bank and its commit, commitment to scale up climate finance assistance to member countries. We rely on ADP prioritizing for improved and better access to climate finance and grant funding, both in scale and speed, to support resilient building and restore fiscal buffers. Mr. Chairman, the government of Tuvalu looks forward to collaborate further with ADP on the government top priorities, including the advancement of urgent infrastructure needs in Tuvalu, which include coastal protection programs to mitigate the encroachment of seawater, salt intrusion, inerable land, and investments to minimize the destructive impacts of king tides and tidal surges on coastal areas and adjacent land, both public owned and private properties. We are keenly aware of that uh, post-disaster reconstruction work is a challenge and it is our appeal to exp expedite resilient infrastructure developments. Like other member countries, Tuvalu is committed to continue work closely with ADB building in building on a stronger partnership and more responsive joint actions for a better and sustainable future. I thank you. Thank you. I would like to thank the governor for Tuvalu. I would like to thank the governors for their remarks. All remarks will be included in the summary of proceedings that will be 
prepared by the Secretary. Uh, before we close this session, I would like to call on the Secretary, Madam Secretary. Thank you, Chair. Please allow us uh, to proceed to a brief ceremony. It has been our tradition to pass on the baton from the Chair to the Chair-elect. May I request the Chair, the Governor for Georgia, the Chair-elect, represented by the alternate governor for Italy and the ADB president to come forward to the baton passing and the photo. I now call on, on the chair elected of the Board, Board of Governors, please. Your Excellency, Excellency Chair of the Board of Governors, President Asakawa, fellow governors and alternates, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Let me express Italy's appreciation for the opportunity to host the 58th annual meeting of the Board of Governors of the Asian Development Bank which will take place in Milan from May 4 to May 7, 2025. As a founding member of the ADB, Italy is proud to host the annual meeting for the first time. Italy's connection with Asia can be traced back to the Roman Empire and to the Italian tradesmen and explorers traveling east across the centuries. Today, Italy has excellent political and economic relations with the Asia Pacific region. This is testified, among other things, by Italy obtaining the title of Asian Development Partner in September 2020. The city of Milan was chosen because of its unique blend of tradition and modernity. Milan is an ancient city in northern Italy, first settled in about 590 before Christ by a Celtic tribe, then annexed by the Romans in 2022 before Christ. Fast forward 2,200 years, and Milan is now one of the European hubs for technological innovation, finance, and entrepreneurship. We believe the city of Milan will be an ideal setting for the governor's deliberations. We wish to invite all of you to Italy's future host country event, See You in Milan 2025, which will take place this afternoon at 4 p.m. in the ballroom of the Hotel Radisson Iveria. We will offer you a taste of the Milanese art of aperitivo after a brief opera concert performed by renowned Georgian artists. Opera is a passion that we have in common with Georgia, as we witnessed yesterday. We look forward to welcoming you to the event this afternoon and to Italy next year. Thanks a lot. I thank the Governor for Italy for her message. Fellow Governors, esteemed attendees, I hereby declare this meeting concluded.